<laughs> Never oh, I want to talk to you about 60 Days In, but like since we're kind of tangentially talking about prison. Okay. New season, COVID ruined the last season. It was unwatchable because mm. no one on the show at all. Can you give me like the two second premise of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they go to the scariest, least functional jails um, in the in the country and they throw in contestants there now they tell the regular <laughs> inmates hey we're a documentary or we're with pbs or we're with the better prisons bureau or whatever they say but they say we're here to film we're going to interview we're going to interview some of you there's cameras here cameraman will move through the pod they give an excuse but secretly they have stuck in like half a dozen regular joes who are being paid i don't know like three thousand dollars a week to go to prison <laughs> for 60 days and sometimes it's pretty sketchy like they don't fit in well you know sometimes it'll be a nerdy <laughs> white guy in a room full of black dudes and they're just not they're just not meshing well you they know? do it and on just, purpose yeah they do it on purpose what my favorite story of all time is <clears throat> frequently they will load the deck against themselves first they put they send pussies in because they want to see meltdowns the pussies all quit like six out of nine quit. So then they go to the ringers. This is Tyrone. He did 22 years in federal prison for, for an armed robbery. Tyrone's like, yeah, some will be staying in jail for the next two months. Whatever. <laughs> Tyrone doesn't <laughs> care. He's so scary that he goes to their scary jail and loans someone a suit, like a ramen noodle packet. They can't pay him back. Again, he is a contestant. He says... <laughs> He's outside their cell. He oh, can't yeah. get to him. The door's locked. He's like, give me your fucking pants then, pussy. Give me your fucking pants. And the dude takes his pants off and feeds them under the door. Tyrone takes those fucking pants, and now they're his pants. He's made the debt right. That guy goes and says he fears for his life in the <laughs> pod and goes to a safety pod somewhere in fear of their ringer contestant. <laughs> 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 this season... Same thing. Jesus COVID's a little Christ. bit of an issue. So for the first week, it's hell that you're in there. You're in a pod 23 hours a day with a stranger. Usually, if you're getting thrown in it's your first week, a lot of these people are coming off drugs. Now, if it's weed, who cares? But most of them are coming off serious drugs. This guy has the most awful diarrhea in the toilet three feet away from our contestant. And he goes, sorry, bro. Gotta go. And, 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 the camera's right there. Like, you watching this guy take a shit, and he wipes and, like, looks at it and then smells it and, like, throws it away. <laughs> the contestant is wrapped up like a mummy. <laughs> <laughs> he's in the corner of the cell. He's just up on the butt. His head, he's in the fetal position, face in the corner, wrapped up with all the cloth he has. And this man is violently shitting. And, and you have to take your jumpsuit all the way off. You're like George Costanza. You're naked in there. <laughs> you have to come completely out of this thing, the white. And you're in there for a week with whoever they throw you in there with. Crazy, psychopathic people screaming and coming off drugs. Then finally, you get to go to Gin Pop, and it's just a bore. Taylor, we would be the toughest guys there. Okay? I'm not really? saying we'd be the most likely to intimidate somebody, but if there was an arm wrestling contest... One of us is going to come out on top, and 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 our and our and our gay contestant is just being weird, standing out, and and they've they're, they're hyping this other black guy up to be this the big bad, and I'm like, this is just a kid who wants to like get on TV. He's jumping yeah. around and clapping and stuff and having a good time. It's it's so shit right now. Everybody quit. Everybody quit. And they this one guy he he does nothing but smile. He's like, yeah, you know. You don't know what it's like till you get in there. <laughs> and he, he wants people to go, yeah, man, it's okay. We understand. But he was talking so much shit beforehand. I'm built for this. I'm built different. You don't understand. The streets One of I'm those from, every season. The streets I'm from, the neighborhood I grew up in, the people I, and just all these things about him that make him the guy who's bred for this, built for this, born for this. And he's right away scared, scared. Because oh, yeah. they're in a pod, like a dormitory, and everybody can just walk around. And if somebody wants to get you, they can just get you. There's no getting around that. Because we're all just hanging out in a big room together. And there's no I think guards. It's season, uh, I think it's season six of that show. 
that the first five seasons were in not as wild of a prison. Mm -hmm. And then I think it was season six. They switched to a much, much more intense prison in Atlanta prison. That's known for being raucous. And I guess that wasn't a huge part of the like intro sheet of like, we're doing it at a different prison or the people, you know, (laughs) they don't know. They they don't think in their head. They're like, it's going to be similar to the, all the other seasons of the show. And it was Atlanta was three to four. Well, then it was ever six was. And, these people went in and usually like on all the other seasons, there'd be like a almost like a fact finding phase where the, the the people in prison are like, I don't know about this guy. I don't know if I want to talk to him. I almost have a feeling that he's a plant, that he's fake. Like they're almost scoping it out in this one. People would walk in and like people are gibbering in the corner. They're screaming <laughs> like there's like a guy walks in and someone walks in. He's like, get me mattress. And it's like, like she's like screaming at him. And it's like, you've been in there for, for 35 seconds. And someone is, uh, someone gets kicked and like chooses to leave. Dude, season seven is McDonough, Georgia. I used to live like, I mean, like two years ago, I was, I was there basically. Like I'm like three miles from that place. No, um, I've been in Atlanta for like half a decade now. Um, at least, right. It's been a while. Anyway, um, I'm really liking this, uh, this season as much. I hate watch it, I'll admit, because I think that they're all pussies because they're scared of nothing. Because the situation is that everybody's just in here. There aren't any violent people. You don't see anybody being like, I just want to hurt somebody. I want to steal. I want to take and bully. <laughs> no one has that attitude. And that's the problem that you don't want. Everybody's just chilling and their mattresses. It looks just like a summer camp with a bunch of boys. With I think they might have like a foosball table. Like they're goofing around and partying and, and having a good time. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not a scary ass jail. The women's side is scary. The women are nasty bitches, and they're scary. And some of them are scary, like like, like they're screaming wait, wait, ha- Scary that if you're in a woman's prison, you're a god, right? You you could beat up six of them at a time. You're not concerned. Well, there are women contestants on the women's side, obviously. I, I'm, I'm, this is a hypothetical. This is like you're oh. saying they're scary. Well, they're scary I wouldn't too. want to be in a. Yeah, sure, I suppose. But I'm talking about like for the contestants. You know, there, there's ladies yeah, yeah. stuck over there with scary women. For them, it's scary because they're in that 24 hour lockdown and they just sort of crazy bitch and gen pop going like, I know when you get out, I'm gonna be waiting for you when you get out. You just wait. The, you know, she's clapping and snapping her fingers and stuff. Lots of. Lots of cultural cues that I'm not too familiar with. It's scary. Mm. <laughs> cultural cues I'm not, <laughs> I'm not too <laughs> familiar with. That's funny. Yeah, that, that is I a show that I would mean. never want to participate in because I I really made fun I kept of it. thinking like should have just fucking I, I'd have done this season no problem. How much you should take? do? You got experience. They make I give you think they give you like fifty grand for the two months. Sixty days. Yeah, it's almost a thousand dollars a day. So pretty pretty solid. Would you do good. it for that money, Kyle? I think it, see, here's the problem. You don't know where you're going. If I knew that you were going to where they are right now, yeah, I'd do that because it looks super duper easy. It really looks like a li- a lighter version than what I already did. Hmm. It, it, it looks like, um, and plus you get to have the fun of being on the TV show and playing that silly game. Like that would keep you entertained. And knowing that you have a whole safety net around you and none of it's real, you hmm. wouldn't be all, you know, I'm going to have some fun here. I don't know. I think I'm going to try to trick some of these guys into some extra charges or something. Who knows? <laughs> right? I want to say, yeah, I'd do it. A thousand bucks a day. That'd be fun. Like, I could do this. I'd no problem. I'd just keep my nose you quit clean. quit any What's time, too. Part? But I feel like that's a little me, like, Billy Badassing. You know, if I was there, I'd have taken out that bully and taught him a lesson. And then you're actually in that situation and you don't. So I don't know. Yeah. But I, I like to think that I would do this and I would be fine. You're a, you're a strong person, like all around, and like physical discomfort and mental stuff wouldn't like it, it would get to you, but you wouldn't break. Like some these people break so fast. Like I went through all that nonsense through the, through the legal system from beginning to end. I never cried in front of those people. I never <laughs> like I never cried in a fucking police car. No way I was I would cry in jail or prison. You don't yeah. cry in any of those places, and you see these guys fucking tearing up and shit and like getting scared and the. Like, these are just people like you. Like they're not animals. It, it it really isn't like that mental asylum sort of image you have from TV or movies where someone's gibbering and 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 there's weapons and drugs and like a whole system going on. Just seem like people hanging out in jail. Nate, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, anyone who watches my streams on Twitch, Taylor Merka on Twitch, follow me there. Nate is 
we've we, we've watched most seasons of 60 Days In, and we have kind of a power ranking of as the ep- as the seasons start, we'll be like, oh, dude, this guy's going to be a bitch. This girl's going to be good. This guy sucks dick. And then every once in a while, and you invest in them. And so I'm like, oh, this guy's been very high T, so I'll throw some cash into him. But then he'll get beat up, and it's like I lose all my money, which is unfortunate. You <laughs> are the highest T, highest stock of anyone on the show in the show's history. I made a lot of fake money on you, so I appreciate that. <laughs> appreciate it. Yeah. So we had a... Uh, We had Mark from 60 Days In on, and his experience was a lot different than yours, to say the least. And for those of you who aren't familiar, 60 Days In, you go in for 60 Days in Prison. Nate, you're the only person who did 120 Days In. Is that right? Yeah, so I'm the only person to do two seasons. Yeah. Were you when they, because basically you did so well that the guard's like, hey, you want to just hang out? And (laughs) what what were your thoughts when he came to you? Were you like, fuck this? Were you like, no, I want to be the best motherfucker this show's ever seen? So, I mean, to be honest, uh, when they asked, uh, at first just pride kicked in, right? I mean, it was just kind of like one of those things. Yeah, let's run it. And then when I realized that they were not kidding, they were being serious. I was like, whoa, oh man, I got to think about this for at least a day. Yeah. And I mean, (laughs) they probably keep paying you. That's nice. Yeah. Yep. And just to be clear, when he says he did two seasons, there wasn't a break in between. He just stayed no. in fucking jail. <laughs> yeah. So just just think of the mind, the mind warp that I had to go through when I'm thinking, wow, I got like five days left, you know, and then they hit me with this. And it's yeah. like, I mean, it's like you're celebrating like you're like, man, that final week, like I'm going home. And then all of a sudden it's boom. It's starting all over again. <laughs> was there a time so. like 10 days into s- the second 60 days where you're like this sucks oh yeah imagine Kyle knows exactly. <laughs> I, I know that exact feeling <laughs> <laughs> except you didn't volunteer and nobody paid you <laughs> Kyle did 60 days in too I'm not sure if we made that clear for Nate no no I, I didn't know about that Kyle yeah but it was it was real when I did it <laughs> <laughs> hey it was real when I did it too I promise you I was just getting paid <laughs> yeah. yeah but you can leave whenever you want it <laughs> I sure yeah. would like to buy coffee. <laughs> I would have done that. They'd be like, that guy's crazy. I'm going to rape him. <laughs> <laughs> My shoulder's really acting up. Yeah, what well, was we'll get sign- to the medical in a week or two. Was your shoulder the sign to get out? Just go to the what, what was in your one signal? season it was. But for Nate, what was yours? What's that? If you needed to get out, if, you, if, if something got hot and you needed to get out, how do you signal? Uh, so I, I believe it was uh, to put your hands above your head. Um, I mean, like, you know, I think it was like to do that. Okay. Um, and then to talk about sports or something like, um, I don't, I forget, man, that was, that was three years ago. That's how far Nate was from ditching. Didn't even know the signs. (laughs) Hey, I'll tell you what, if you don't have a plan, you won't use it. What was, uh, in either of the, yeah, yeah. In either of the 60 days, what was the closest you ever got to being like, fuck this? Because as a viewer, I was like, at no point was like, oh, Nate's in trouble. Like some, they would show some inmate being like, I think Nate's a little too articulate for being here. And then you would show up and they'd be like, nah, he's fine. Like, so I would, I I would say, honestly, man, like uh, I started dealing with like a lot of depression in there, to be honest. Like uh, I started getting really down on myself. Like there's, there's times in there and I, you guys are probably going to laugh. Like that I actually started to question, like, is this real? Like, am I really here for this TV show or am I actually in here? Like, (laughs) um, but yeah, there was a time I read, uh, um, a book about a whole bunch of, uh, world war two, I think, uh, soldiers that had been captured. And, uh, I just was reading it one night and I almost tapped out. Like it was, it was almost lights out and I was reading through it and I'm just like, man, I'm done. Like I am, I'm, I'm not doing this anymore. And then I was like, hey, I'll give it until the morning. We'll see how I feel in the morning. Then the morning came and I was just like, all right, let's keep going. It, I have this theory that like, no matter where you are, eventually that just becomes the life that is normal for you, right? Whether it be a prison like you were in or that like Indian poverty or some Brazilian jungle, like it, this is just life. You just wake up and do life things. Is, is that what happens? Yeah. You just accept where you are and keep on kicking? Yeah, man. I mean, it, it's just, it's your new life. That's, I mean, that's kind of how you got to look at it, right? You're going to, you're going to work every day. That's what I was doing. I was going to work every day. So, I mean, I just had to accept that's, that was my work environment. 
<laughs> there's there uh so there was one uh mark as we said he came on he got roasted by my chat when he was trying to set up a bible study and walked around yeah. going bible study bible study and i was like hey, we asked him on here i'm like mark that must have been so disheartening that nobody came to your bible study and he's like no those motherfuckers at A&E edited it to make it look like nobody came to my Bible study. I had to group right away. Everybody came. And so that part made me look like a loser and I disliked it. Did you have anything like that? Where as you were watching the show with like your, your girlfriend or friends, you're like, oh, this next part, this next part. And then, oh, wait, what the fuck? That's not how it went down. That was three weeks earlier. That scene. Was there a bunch of that? So to be honest, I mean, you know, I'm not knocking a and I mean, they're making, uh, I mean, they made an awesome, you know, TV series. So, True. um, there was a lot that happened that you're just like, ah, dang, I didn't, they didn't play that out. <laughs> but I mean, that's just production, you know? Yeah. Are you, anything like, are you talking about like violence? Like maybe they, something got too intense and they had to cut or just. No, um, I just think like, you know, like they, they kind of made things like the, the climatic, you know, like moment, you know, that they're building up to. And then they'd pull stuff that happened, you know, two or three weeks ago and they'd put it in there and you're like, wait, that's not what was going on then. Or, you know, it, I mean, production, they just, they, they just cut a whole bunch of pieces out and put them where they want them. So. Yeah. No, that makes sense. You kind of have to do that, I suppose. But I just, I did feel bad for Bible study because that was really an embarrassing scene for him. <laughs> yeah. I felt, I felt bad for him. You didn't get treated right. That's the bad part. Like, it, mm -hmm. I don't know. It, it, if you look bad, that's one thing. If they make you look bad, that's not fair. Yeah, you know, everyone's True. cringe from time to time, but he wasn't. He had a successful Bible study cooking. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> you don't think it was that successful, Kyle? I, I I I don't know. I don't know, but I never bought that he was supposed to be like second in line to to yeah. like lead the whites or whatever. He was like, "Oh yeah, it was I was next in line." It was like, I think that that guy in charge had a bunch of busy work he needed doing. And he was like, oh, yeah, you're my right-hand man. Um, he called a shot, right? He had his own people beat up his own people so that other people didn't beat him up instead. Do you remember that? That happened a couple uh, times, I think, yeah. Where it's I like in something the like that. He said it on the show. Yeah, I, I just didn't th don't think that anybody was uh, respecting that guy or doing anything that he said because he said it. I would just imagine that, like, if there's a, a hierarchy there and that guy's like, he wouldn't just pick a, you're my new right-hand guy. There'd be some, like, 6'4 Aryan with, like, very old swastika tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, no, original. You're up, you're, you're up next. Yeah, that, yeah Mark's, that's Mark's a pretty big boy, too. So I think, you know, a lot of things, you know, especially in jail, like, you know, I mean, it's just size, you know. Mm -hmm. And and Mark's, Mark's fairly big. I mean, he doesn't, uh, I think when I seen him in person, I was like, oh, man, you're bigger than I thought you were. Maybe you want a teddy bear as your number two, right? If the guy you described, this Hulk with the old Aryan tattoos, is your number two, people start treating him like number one. Maybe you want your number two to be Bagel Boss. And then no, but I'm posting that Aryan with lead to keep him retarded. I'm number one. Ah, this yeah. is just old, 3D chess. Dope them with lead. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody will have a dead number two, and Mark will be my number two. <laughs> Put too much in there. Yeah, it's. I, I constantly am watching the show, and I bet everybody who talks to you about it is like Mr. You know, I know. Or is he frozen or no? For me, in a very funny way, yes. In a very. There we go. He's yeah, back. He's back. Can you hear us, Nate? Yeah, I don't know what happened. It just froze. That's and, okay. Uh, You're good. Yeah, you just froze with a very. With a grimace on your face. I wasn't sure if you were upset. <laughs> so that's good. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm always wondering, watching that show, like, how would I do? And I lean towards the fact that I would do much worse than I think I would. Because I imagine everybody goes into it being like, I'm going to be the guy. Just like, I imagine it being like the first time you go to play paintball. I remember when I was like 11, I was like going in imagining like, one shot, one kill, popping around the side, running, and then you go and do it, and like some thirty-four-year-old with a twelve hundred dollars setup just mows you down, and you're sad. <laughs> but like, I imagine that's how sixty days in. Like, even if you're all psyched up, like, yeah, I've seen all the episodes, I know how to do it. I, I read prison shows, I watched Oz to get the the fear into me, and <laughs> now, like, you show up, and I imagine a lot of that just poof leaves your head once you're in reality, right? Like, so all the ends fall apart. Honestly, the only person that I think was able to go in there with that whole mentality was Abner, right? I mean, the dude had like he what, yeah. eight years of like actual hard time that he that he served. 
I mean, that dude knew the ins and outs, how jails worked, how prisons worked. Like he knew how to, you know, how yeah. to interact. So I think he was, I went in there honestly, just thinking originally I was just going to lay low. I was like, Hey, I'm going to lay low, just kind of do my time and get out of here. Mm -hmm. Was there a, a moment kind of where the other inmates were getting close to you where they're like, where he kind of thought, Holy shit, I'm, I'm on the ends here. They trust me. Yeah. That happened pretty quickly too, man. Like, uh, like I tried laying low and there was a time where like, you know, like some of the, the, the leaders started kind of coming to me and talking to me and things like that, telling me information, like, you know, telling me, Hey, look, if I needed drugs, if I needed this, you know, just let them know. Um, and then there was times where, uh, actually I wish, uh, Trey was on here with us. Uh, so there was this big fight scene where he went up into a room with, uh, like one of the biggest dudes in there. Rue was the guy's name and they fought behind closed doors. And that dude actually came up to me and he's like, Hey, um, I'm making an announcement to the, uh, pod but it doesn't go for you or your, uh, your cellmate Desmond. Um, but everybody's going to pitch in items from commissary. You guys don't have to pay up. And I was like, wow. Okay. <laughs> Man. What, what were the items for? Just, yeah, I don't understand. Why rent. did everyone pay? Rent. Rent? Just pay. Oh, oh just so they like, were just extorting me. items out of everyone, but you got yeah. a pass because yeah. you're cool. Is that the scoop? Hey man, I'm hoping it was because I was cool. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't expecting head later or anything. <laughs> no, no, man. And, and you know, honestly, uh, I went in there and and you know, anytime anybody talked to me, like you know, they'd be like, "Oh man, you're a, you're a marine. You you'll probably kill us with one hand." I'm like, "Nah, dude, it's not like that, man. Like, like I probably been in just as mount. I've been in le the least amount of fights probably out of any of these guys in here. You know." And they're like, yeah, but you're trained to kill. I'm like, no, not really, dude. <laughs> See, the, that probably made them like you more. They're like, no, that's part of his Marine training. Keep them <laughs> underestimating you. I would have been like, yeah, I, you better not get me to unlock the death stair. <laughs> yeah, the mile stair. you across the pod, if I so wish. Yeah, that being a Marine definitely helped. It seems like that helps in every season, or at least a military man. They find another military guy in there, and they have immediate camaraderie. Yeah, honestly, man, uh, military gets along really well with uh, with inmates. Um, hmm. I mean, you're both I don't know, I don't know. regimented stuff. Yeah, I, I don't know what the the psych psychological side of it is there, but they both do time. There, can't man. wait to get out. Yeah, <laughs> counting down days. <laughs> yeah, All there was <laughs> the one guy in addition to Abner that I think handled it really well is a guy named Quentin, this black ex cop, and he never seems to get upset about anything like he was laying on his cot under the stairs huge guy and some crackhead white guy falls over and he's like having a seizure next to him and he's like it's very difficult as a police officer to not get up and go over and engage and try and help but i figured the guards knew what they were doing they entered the pod went over they didn't even touch the man they let the inmates continue to hold him i was very disappointed by what i saw and that was it like he didn't even get mad or anything like four days in he's like i'd love to have my pin so i could get this phone call out and they're like it's it's your problem man sorry he's like this is incredibly disappointing knowing that i've been sending people to this sort of establishment and this is how they run it. like he was like <laughs> he was wow. mad about the administration and the policy <laughs> but yeah quentin rules do you uh would you ever go for uh a total 180? of 180 yeah if they ever pull you back in for a best of season in a few years they, you, the survivor did it they, they'll definitely do it with you at some point and i don't know i don't know how i'd do it man like I mean, inmates love the 60 Days In show, right? I got the answer. 60 Days In International. You go to fucking See? Thailand, throw you in a oh, Thai fucking uh, prison. <laughs> I don't know, that's man. scary town right there. That's that's 100% scary town. No, you have to go to a Vietnam prison and not let it slip that you're in the U.S. military. Yeah, don't, uh, don't mention that. Don't mention the, that. The true, the true challenge. No, we don't. We, that, that'd be terrible. No, you won't. 60 Days in International, I would want to go to, like, Sweden, Norway, Finland. <laughs> Have you seen those prisons? Like, you get Xbox. You're like, I'm not yeah. going back. They've got all the good shit. That's yeah. Awesome. <laughs> that guy that shot, like, 70 people in, in Sweden, like, 10 years ago or whatever, it showed, like, a picture of him. He's got a nice little private shower with, with tinted glass. 
He's got a TV. Wow. He had a PS3 at the time, and this was like ten years ago. It's like, what the fuck, dude? This isn't fair. <clears throat> just but. had come out. He's got the yeah, yeah, it just <laughs> come out, and he's got the PS. The new, he's like, I got the new Grand Theft Auto. It's awesome. He's just killing kids walking. Yeah. Out. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I was saying before the show the the kind of beginning of this is I, I started streaming it on Twitch. And everybody wanted to get someone from the show. And we were on season five. I, I jumped in at season five for some random ass reason. And they wanted Mark. And so Chiz, by God, he got Mark. So thanks again for coming on, man. Hey, fist bump, guys. Hell yeah. There we go. <laughs> I like a little engagement. That's nice. So <laughs> that makes you feel good. <laughs> so, you know, I like one of the most obvious questions on there, I guess, uh, for people who don't know, 60 Days In, it's a program where you spend 60 days in a, in a prison or a jail. And you have to try and solve a mission where you need to figure out some information on behalf of, you know, the prison guards and everything. But one of the things, the first thing I thought of what I wanted to ask you was, what was the, was there anything so scary, so outrageous that they couldn't even put it on the show that happened to you where like someone got stabbed or like there was blood? Like, cause I imagine there's a line A&E goes with like, oh shit, that's a little too brutal. We can't show a, what it's, what's about to become a rape. You know, I can only speak of, uh, of of my pod, but no, we never had anything like that happen. Um, I think the A and E was pretty true to what they showed, minus the editing. But we can get into that here as the as the interview progresses. Yeah. But as far as anything too graphic, too nasty, nah, nah, it, there was nothing that bad. That's good to hear. I I went into every every episode or the very beginning of every season, kind of making my own internal power rankings. Where I'm like, this motherfucker's gonna kill it, or like, oh no, this chick is fucked. Oh no, <laughs> like she's not gonna do well. I think that was the season where that was that blonde woman, and her only Chiron was right wing conservative. Yeah, apparently that was that's all she's ever been about is. And like the, the intro for those people is hilarious because like you'll come from someone you know like like yours where it's like I just kind of you know want to learn how this goes. I want to try and you know you're you're Christian. You want to reach them with a, with a positive message, and she's like packing in her nice hair ties and everything, being like only bad people go to prison, and I'm a good person, and so I'll be fine in there, and it's not. You know, I think we give it, they have it too easy in there. And it's like, oh no, this bitch is in for a rude awakening. The people who think that prisoners have it too easy, you know, they, they never do so well. Strange enough, you know, it yeah, turns out it's not yeah. that easy. So, well, I was stuck though with that nomenclature super fan, which I didn't like. But yeah. That was, that was an A&E production decision. <laughs> yeah. So I think I would have rather been, I don't know, I don't know who got worse, uh, worse criticism was either me or the right wing conservative. So uh, hmm. I think I think uh, if I hadn't uh, finished it as strong as I did, I might have gotten. So I don't know. I don't know which which nomenclature is worse. I didn't think you were going to make it. I didn't think you were going to make it. I didn't. You, think uh, no, it, it it looked you you really proved everybody wrong. I'm I'm sure you take pride in that. And I, that was probably I want to say in like there's in the first episode of every uh, every season there's sort of this sort of moment where you're hanging out with some of the uh, people who run the jail and. And I want to say one of them was even kind of rude to you, right? Like, like wasn't? Yeah. So Sheriff <laughs> Lamb, he he came up to me, and said, "Man, would you spill pencils?" <laughs> man, come on, dog. Come on. I was I was stuck as the uh, pencil, and then when if if you guys remember the the first day I walked in the pod, Rocker came up and mm -hmm. accused me of stealing a pig and a bicycle. So unfortunately, <laughs> in, in in the very beginning, I was kind of labeled as the weak person. Um, you know. It is what it is. Uh, you know, I know I wear the glasses. I'm kind of the big, the big, fat, jovial, nerdy dude. But, uh, <laughs> you know, what a lot of people don't know about me is, you know, I, I served 13 years in the Army first. And then I actually became a corrections officer for a, for a spell here in Georgia. And, uh, and so I, I won't say that that prepared me, but I've learned how to put up with a lot of crap and just deal with it. So I would say I was vastly underestimated. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You definitely found like a niche within the uh, within the pod, I guess. And it seemed like before long, you were kind of like the number two guy among the whites. What, because like like our audience knows, like it's it's very divided racially <clears throat> in the uh, in the pods and jails and especially in prisons. But it seemed like you were kind of like second in command of the whites at some point you were the yeah. guy who was like all right guys white meeting let's go yeah. and so yeah but like uh, there were these awkward moments where the guy who was in charge i can't recall his name but like Josh. the guy who 
Yeah, the leader yeah, of the Lord whites. Farquaad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Lord Farquaad, who's like a legit white. Yeah. He's, he, and of course, super racist guy. But he would he would say some awful things like <laughs> to you. He'd be like, you know, this race or that race. You know how they are. Just 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 rat people, really. And you're just like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and if you guys if you guys yeah. saw the the pre edited stuff, it was even worse. Man. He was, <laughs> sure. He was talking all this Aryan German German Nazi language lingo to me, and I'm like. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> what what was the most absurd thing you had to agree with with him? Because every, <laughs> everything he says, you just have to be a sounding board, right? You can't go. Actually, I'm not 100 percent sure about that assertion. You have to go. Hell yeah, obviously. Yeah, I mean, duh, jeez. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I would say that you know he was very he was very much you know his views uh you know fell in line kind of with the Nazi Party, if you will, if you can imagine what Hitler would say. <laughs> And I was like, oh, boy, this is going to be awesome. But, you know, I got, especially if you watch uh, Twitter traffic during the show, I got a lot of crap for White TV Day. But yeah. uh, <laughs> Oh, my God, White TV Day was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> and But you got to understand, there, it's it's about surviving. And and I'm sure maybe this will lead up to, uh, to uh, uh, Dylan. The kid that got jumped for wanting to hang with the black guys. Can, before we jump but, to that, can you can you break yeah. down the white TV day thing for people who don't know what happened there? OK, so <laughs> once again, a lot of it was edited and I own it. I, I will completely own that awkward moment. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so so, you know, uh, everyone had a TV day. We had a schedule and 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 in jail. Of course, uh, you know, I, I didn't care what was on TV that that day, but doggone it, it's the white guy's day to watch TV. And there's no way you're going to be able to to let any other race. And that was a, another thing that, you know, they, they mentioned it, but but the general public didn't take it too well, is it really was a racially divided gel. It was in Arizona. And I actually heard one of your previous podcasts where you talked uh, and, and I felt some redemption by listening to the podcast. Um, where you had the gentleman on that had done uh, the British guy, and I don't remember his name. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he talked about being in Arizona and how racially divided it was. So it was racially divided. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you, March Madness was on, and I wanted to watch some doggone basketball. But it was more the only reason why I, I really made a big deal about it was because it was more of, of, you know what, this white TV day, you had to fit in. You know, I didn't like any of the crap that Josh talked about. Once again, I, you know, I did time in the Army. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a law enforcement officer now. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter, you know, what color you are. You've got to have my back. If you got my back, i got your back. So that was kind of the background that I came from. And uh, even though growing up in the Deep South, um, you know, we still – you know, have people here that aren't racist. Um, but it was just one of those things that, that, you know, I had to prove a point. I had to get in, if you will, with Josh. It didn't matter, uh, any of the other guys, cause it was the white guys that had my back and I had to, mm-hmm. I had to get in so I can find information. So I think they were watching my pod was weird, you know, working at the prison and, uh, having worked before, you know, in a jail, um, you know, most guys that have that, uh, machoism that they all want to watch sports all the time, but I was stuck in a pod that wanted to watch cartoons, and I was kind of sick of cartoons <laughs> that day. And I really wanted to watch doggone basketball. So in my head, it was just a great idea. Hey, let's let's prove myself to uh, to Josh, and um, I had no intention of ever being elevated to second in charge. That one kind of kind of uh, broadsided me, um, but. <laughs> But um, the number two Nazi, yeah, put yeah. that on you. <laughs> if you ever do 60 days in, days in again, that could be your Chiron number two. Nazi. <laughs> hey, I put it on my resume, and, yeah. uh, and so I've, I've got that out now. We'll see, we'll see if anything happens as a result of that. But, um, yeah, um, you know, it was just one of those things that it, it, it had no, I could care less what was on TV, it was more about acceptance, and mm. uh, unfortunately, there, even though on the outside, I, I despise you know, racism. On the inside, I had to give a crap about it because you know there you don't you don't run with the whites you get jumped. Playing the hand you're dealt, you're in prison. Mm-hmm. Y- you have to be racist. Like that's the rules. Yeah, yeah, and and th- they will tell you in there in Pinal County, one of the biggest topics of uh, of discussion was everything you do here follows you in the Department of Corrections. 
So one thing you guys didn't really see um, that was edited out is Josh got all his directions. He'd make a phone call up to uh, whoever it was up at DOC that was in charge of the white guys. And, and every decision you make follows you because he, they communicate with the uh, department of correction, the guys in prison up there. <clears throat> oh, wow. So what was when you, when you chose March madness for white TV day, and then immediately it seemed like rocker who was like the, the black main enforcer on the block, mm -hmm. Immediately, it seems like he's like, you, you're turning it to March Madness and you're not even going to watch this motherfucker's not even watching the March Madness. And like he immediately starts calling you out where you just I, I would have been scared right away. Like, <laughs> oh, no, I, I thought I did something that everybody would like. And now I'm <laughs> getting roasted. So I wasn't really scared of Rocker. Rocker, you saw him fight uh, that one mm -hmm. kid, Brandon. And he, you know, don't get me wrong. I, I had no issues with Rocker on a personal level, but he didn't scare me. Once again, probably being in the military, I don't get scared at a lot of things, except my wife. Yeah, she scares me. <laughs> but uh, that being said, I don't get scared at a lot of things. But, you know, um, at that point, I, it, a lot of editing took place there so i watched tv for probably an hour and then and then i walked away and was i don't remember what i was doing and and then of course uh, rocker uh, made that comment so it, you know it was more to prove a point and then the one thing you really kind of saw a little bit of but you didn't see the whole story is we kind of took everything to josh to see how he'd react since he was the pod boss uh for the whites for the woods remember it's woods mm -hmm. whites only one day soon and uh, uh, just to kind of see how he reacted. And at the end, he relented and said, hey, y'all put it on whatever you want to. And it's like, dude, dude, why are you why are you talking all this talk? And then you back down whenever anything happens. But yeah, he sold you down the stuff. river on that. We didn't, oh, we didn't see that part. Absolutely. I still oh. hate that guy for, for that. <laughs> still <laughs> by son of a gun. The number one thing was the TV thing. A few runs down was the Nazi thing. You know, <laughs> mainly the the throwing me under the bus. The TV yeah, that pissed me off. And then we end up in jail, and then we're on sixty days in, and we have to make up better paperwork so we don't get bullied. Dude, I watched sixty days in with you. Was that last night? I think it was last. That night. was last night. Yeah. yeah, I was expecting to watch that show. I'd never seen an episode before, and I was like, ah, usually when I do gaming, I like to play for at least four hours, and I, I don't think I'll be on that long tonight. So I'm just gonna watch sixty days in. I watched almost five hours of sixty days in. <laughs> And that show is awesome. I've I, seen every episode. What season are you watching? I'm watching season five. It's got Abner. Uh, Abner's very cool. I like him. Although I'm starting. It's episode five now. We watched five 45 minute episodes last night, and it's getting to the point now where, like, episode three or so, he's Mister. So for people who haven't seen it, he's is this Abner the Chicano guy. Yeah. Yes, the Chicano guy. He used to be a Latin king, but now he's going in there pretending to be in the Chicano gang because apparently they're big rivals. And his story is, or basically for people who don't know, this story is you, you people sign up, you go into a prison for 60 days, 60 days in, and they have a quote unquote mission while they're in there. And these people do not fully comprehend that they're not necessary for any of these missions. This is a pretense for the show. And so like when they're getting interviewed, like, I mean, I'm really trying to complete the mission. It's like, dude, come on, come on. You're, we're, we're in here to, to watch you get fucked with a little bit. But this Abner guy, he is talking up a big game like I was in prison for X amount of years and I was an enforcer for the Latin Kings. And so I know exactly what's coming. And so early on, he's like yelling, threatening people. Then by episode like three, four, five, the other prisoners start to figure out that like he'll yell at you about how he's an enforcer. And that's it. He'll like get right up in your face and be like, you touch my stuff and I'll beat your fucking ass, man. I I've been around the block. You think I haven't? You think I wouldn't? And like get right up in the face, say I'm going to beat your ass. Nothing. Nothing, and they're starting to figure him out. Oh, he Hopefully, beat that one child up, though. The one child? Well, I haven't gotten to that yet. Well, you didn't see him bitch slap the guy yet? Oh, uh, yeah, he, like, slapped a guy, but it wasn't a... He slapped the piss out of that kid. Oh, well, then I'm thinking of someone else, then, because he then he had... Then it's episode five. That hasn't happened yet. He hasn't open hand or, or fucked somebody yet. It was the kid who was, like, racially confused. Racially confused. He's like half black, half Hawaiian, and and like want he wanted to like be able to hang out with the the Mexicans and the blacks or something. No, we haven't hit that guy yet. The guy that okay, was, the guy I'm thinking about that he was that he was gonna pop was this weird looking Dumbo ear motherfucker little guy who was just first day in. They're like, "What are you in for?" And he's like, "I I steal six hundred dollars of groceries." And they're like, "How'd you do that?" And he's like, 
I put six hundred dollars of groceries in a grocery cart and I try to push it out the store. <laughs> like, they're like, "Oh," and he's like, "And how far did you get?" He's like, "Not even out of the store." <laughs> and then immediately, like Abner, or someone asked him, "They're like, you know, you're a thief, man. You got something in your blood. You got a problem. Like you're gonna, you're not stealing around here, are you?" And the guy's like, "No, I'm not stealing around here." The next scene, it's like. Roberto's second hour in, he walks over <laughs> to the head of the black gang and steals a Pepsi. And then it shows him like sitting there guzzling his Pepsi down. And then not one scene later, it shows him throwing the Pepsi away, walking back to the same guy's locker and stealing a second soda. And it's like, Roberto has decided to steal a second soda from the head of the black gang. And it is, it is a hoot of a show. The women in this season, at least, people are telling me the women in other seasons are much better. The women in this season suck because the whole mission is supposed to be the three that are in that block split off and like make little connections and get to know everybody else in the block. All three of them instantly just form a little click and they're just talking to one another. And then How's one the of them, doing? I, I, the I blonde is doing better that. than I thought. Mm. I was, we were all convinced. The conservative. Absolutely. The, the, yeah, everybody else is like, it's like it was like I was saying on the stream. It's like they ask you when you're on there, like, what do you want on there? Oh, construction worker, construction worker. What do you want on there? Oh, ex con, and you work real estate. Perfect, ma'am. What would you military like on there? Veterans. Oh, uh, mil military veteran, former CEO. And then she's just like, no, I want right wing conservative on there. It's like, what? <laughs> uh, it doesn't, it's, whatever. She did man. not say that. I guarantee whatever. it. They were like, let's call her a right wing conservative. Everyone will hate her. Yeah, well, they'd, I was convinced she was going to do the worst, and then it ended up that the ringer from that season, Steve, who they, they they you know built him up in the beginning. They're like, and then for our final ringer, because they have six people going in on their own, and then just in case those six people get compromised because of some sort of information leak, they have a ringer go in who's totally independent. The other six have no idea who this guy is. He's just blending in, and he is pumping his own tires i'm a private investigator i've been in lots of fights i've i've seen things you wouldn't believe i've done undercover work i've done undercover work for organizations like, i can't like even bad name undercover for work like people shoot at me when i'm in the trees yes <laughs> <laughs> people shoot at me when i'm in trees people when they catch me tailing them the rear end me it's like okay so you're not a very good one he gets he gets one day in he lays under a blanket and then Someone asked him, like, how long are you in for? He's like, I don't know, maybe like a couple a couple of months. And then, like, the, the black guy walks over to the camera in the corner. He's like, shit, you on like 60 days in? <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was day one. And the guy's like hiding under his cover, like, oh no, I've been here for 40 minutes and I'm already exposed. And then all of these inmates in there know that they're being recorded. And so two of these crazy people start talking about a way to get drugs in that they're clearly not actually using. And they're like, so what we what we do is is we dip a, a birthday card in acid and then we let it dry and then we soak the birthday card in uh, cologne, a couple of sprays, so that when it's coming in the jail, they spray, they smell it, and they go, "Oh, this is just perfume." They don't know that it's just an enormous tab of acid, effectively. And this guy laying down is like jackpot, and <laughs> as if the problem in U.S. prisons is LSD. <laughs> And, and so immediately he's been in there for one hour shows him like interviewing and he's like i found what i needed i'm out of here day one yep. and the 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 way you get out is you go mm. oh my sh like you're supposed to make like walk up to the camera and be like oh grabbing your shoulder oh my shoulders oh my sh whoa doing that and by just a couple minutes in he's walking around going Ah, ah <laughs> mm, ooh, both of them now ah, <laughs> he's like walking up and, and he loses his mind to the point because they're not responding to him because they're like bitch this is a show you're not actually on a mission we need you to be entertaining in there you're your your content he walks over to the payphone, calls them and is like i've been doing the sign have you been missing my sign have you been missing it they're like, you just, just stay in there. You, we're not interested in LSD. You can find more stuff for us. And he's like, I'll tell you what. I'm making the sign again right now, and you're going to be in here in 10 minutes, or I'm going to stand on this table in the middle of this, in the middle of this pod, and all of these motherfuckers are going to know what's going down. And immediately they're like, get Steve out of there. He's going to ruin the whole show. And so they just pull him out, and Steve's like, I thought they were going to put me on a different assignment because I discovered it so quickly. And then they just told me, you can't threaten us and expect to stay on the show. Do you know how hard it is to get kicked out of prison? <laughs> and so that guy is 
lowest of the power ranking. Highest power ranking now is the black guy who's a cop because he's already becoming a ranking member of the gang. Like he's screaming at people, being very alpha. He's going overboard a little that bit. Guy's like, jacked. Yeah, like, he looks good. He what, and he's threatening. I, somehow, maybe I saw his face or like collarbone up, and I'm like, he looked pretty skinny, a little skinny to get by in prison. And then I saw him longer, and it was like, what the fuck? He could be a wide receiver or something. Like, yeah, he, yeah, he's a fit, big guy. So him and Abner uh, are my two favorite ones so far from that season. But I got to watch more of this. It's cool. yeah, I love the show. Uh, if you go back to, it might be season two and three. It they're in. I know one of the things they'll do is like season one and season two might both be in Indiana. I know the first season is Indiana. I don't know if they just go back to Indiana for the second season, but they go to Fulton County, Atlanta, Georgia at one point for two, two, two seasons, you know, mm -hmm. and one guy, this white guy, he gets in so good with the prisoners and the prisoners love him so much. They call him white Mike, white Mike. And they're playing ball. He's like good at everything. He's an ex Marine. <laughs> He's like athletic, like playing basketball with all black guys and he's holding his own and he's just good at stuff and he's friendly. People like him. He's 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 in and they get to the end of season two or season three, whichever it is. And they go. So, Mike, um, you did amazing. You did amazing. You found a lot of great intel. I, we got to ask you, though. Would you like to do 60 more days? <laughs> and he's like, ah, uh, I need to think about that. Yeah. <laughs> the next day he's like. You son of a bitch, I'm in. Are you <laughs> he was doing so well, he's in for 120. <laughs> he's, he does 120. Don't and they earn a thousand I, bucks a day. Am I right on that? We've done a lot of research to determine what they get paid. It's impossible that it's a thousand bucks a day, though. If you look at the economics of an A and E yeah, show, like there's just not enough money involved for that to be profitable with like, let's call it eight contestants, eight thousand dollars a day for 60 days. It's 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 not gonna work out. Um yeah, it, it's a lot were. of money. <laughs> I think I think us doing math could be a new tentpole topic. It's four hundred eighty thousand dollars, I think, just off the top of my head. No but it's, it's 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 hard to do money. this and, and do the math in my head. But still, yeah. I it, it seems like too much. I, I I think I read that they pay them maybe maybe ten thousand a month each or something like that, which is still a lot of money. I but I was guessing, yeah, I I feel like that's enough to draw a lot of people in but not so much that it breaks the bank for a show. To, oh, to... you know, another motherfucker on that season five that I like, uh, who he's like this, he's a super fan. His only thing it says under his name is fan of the show. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he was like, his like intro was like, you know what? I've watched every episode and I just don't want to be the first one who gets kicked out, but I think I'm going to do okay. You know, I've watched enough episodes and he gets in there right away and he's, and there's someone screaming on the floor, having a seizure. And he's like, I always watch the, the onboarding process. And I thought, man, how are people getting scared already? I got to tell you, I'm very frightened. <laughs> and, <laughs> I like so, this dude. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's, he's a likable guy. He's just a bit doughy and, and you know, his nips are always showing, but he does one thing in the I middle like him more. where every time he's like getting interviewed, he's like, I have no idea what's, what's going on. And I don't know what I'm doing. Like he's very <laughs> like, upfront I like about this it. Guy. I know he, he's, he's self-confidence like, in, in admitting. In the, yes. In, in the beginning. Oh, he's the preacher oh, man, right? Yes. He's the one that like right in the middle of a big get together. He goes, Bible study, Bible study. And that he's, guy, he's walking around, that he's guy, like, beta, beta males his his way to second in command, which is fitting as a beta. See, he gets to the point where he is number two of all the whites, and the leader of the whites has him as like his, I don't know, his commander or something. He's the one who like goes out and organizes. He's the one who delivers the the orders, and obviously, it's a very racially tense thing in there. So like. The whites are probably more racist than any other race because they're often outnumbered. And well, in they, any case, they make up for it with aggression. Not just that, they make up for, for it with overt racism. Whereas, like, the blacks aren't always talking about whitey, you know, but the whites seem to be awfully concerned with what the other races are up to. And, and so, like, the preacher man, who's the plant, will be talking with, like, the, 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 the number one in command white guy. And he'll be dropping some in bombs and he'll be like, he'll be talking about like all sorts of things that I won't go into. And the preacher man just got to be like, yeah, that's there, how they are. There was, <laughs> where it like showed him to like the preacher man talking to him. 
being like, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. And then the guy walks around him, and the preacher man's the last one leaving the room, and he just looks up at the camera and goes, holy fuck. And he's like, <laughs> just all scared. But he basically, like, he was trying to call the Bible study, but, like, he was clearly trying to do it the way that he thinks prisoners walk. He was walking around going, like, Bible study, Bible study. Hey, y'all, Bible study down here. Nobody, Nobody comes to his Bible study. He's sitting there by himself. He also made the mistake of white TV hour. Like they had a, they're apparently like Kyle said, they have racial TVs, except uh, the guy who was I leading that block. I hope they watch Full House. I hope that's where this is going. Uh, the guy named Rocker, who's the black guy in charge. And this block, the black gang is the most powerful. I think it was the other block where it was the, the white gang that's the most powerful. So there are like different dynamics there, but they're not interacting, obviously. And it's the, the white guy who looks like Lord Farquaad, the head of the whites is like, hey, it's your day. You know, pick what's on TV, dude. Pick what you want. And the guy's like, I don't know. I didn't know what to pick. I didn't, I just didn't want to ruin white TV day is what he said. <laughs> and, and he goes, ESPN. And then everybody's going, oh, oh. And he's like, but it's March Madness. What, you guys don't want to watch March Madness? And then they turn it on that. He sits down and looks away from the TV and Rocker starts going, how are you going to put it on ESPN? You're not even watching the TV. <laughs> Give me the remote. And he's like yelling. And, and this poor preacher guy is like, alone in his little confessional later and he's like well i ruined white tv day <laughs> like, <laughs> so that guy that guy i like a he's lot he's cool yeah I, he's funny. after watching six seasons of that show i think that's what it is i feel infinitely better about how i handled myself in jail and in prison because some of these people are such pussies and such bitches and so socially retarded that it's just like why would you say that why would you do that <laughs> why would you stand there why are you sitting like that What's wrong with you? Like, like, wait till you get to the season in Fulton County where they start thinking that one of the fellows is gay because he walks a little funny mm. and he carries himself a little funny. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. Because, <laughs> like, if you were trans, like, if you were a hot gay person in there, if, 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 if you were attractive and, like, open to, like, servicing some men, that'd be okay. Nobody mind. They love that. Some of them in particular. But if you're just like a regular looking guy, if you look like one of us and you're just gay, that doesn't fly. That doesn't fly. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're not hot enough to be gay. We all know that. Now, and also, Maybe if and, I worked out in prison, I would be. We don't right? have the build for quality. A lot of burpees. <laughs> <laughs> burpees. Burpees until you. No, 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 no. Forget the burpees. Anymore. Squats. Mmm, that's good thinking. That's that's what's gonna serve you best as a prison bitch. Up. Yeah, huh? Literally. Nice and firm back there. Mm -hmm. That'd be funny to be a guy who ruins it immediately, where they're like talking to me, they're like, Taylor, you're gonna go in, try and infiltrate the white gang, see how high up you can get. And as I'm going in, getting interviewed, I'm like, they told me to infiltrate the white gang. I don't think so. I don't think I'm gonna do that. Just walk in and be like, hey, what's up, Holmes? It's me, Tito. And then immediately like, get him out of there. Get him out of there. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> immediately, immediately they have to pull me out. They're like, and I'm like, oh, I didn't realize they would tag me as white. And it's like, <laughs> you had an American Eagle shirt on. <laughs> you were the only new prisoner with Sperry's. <laughs> man you don't like boating recreationally man <laughs> man you know uh, for hispanic tv day i'm putting on hgtv get a little property brothers yeah, like, <laughs> and they're like oh you're not you're not pulling it off man <laughs> mm -hmm. no it's a great show um and there's some like legit like fights and stabbings that oh, yeah. go down it um I seen stabbings they're kind of rare. Um, I'm trying to think of the season that has the stabbings. It's not Fulton County. Um, it's it, in that season. Like one of the guys was like is like an ex college quarterback. He's like big black guy and he's really ripped and he's tall and thin and and like he's just got his shirt off all the time, like doing chin ups on the stairs for the I cameras. And uh, at some point, two of the other prisoners get into like an argument, and it it, it just keeps getting more and more serious until they're shouting and yelling and sort of in that pre-fight stance and one runs away, like runs away. And you're like, well, that was weird. And he immediately returns with a mop handle first swings it at the guy and misses and it snaps in two. And instead of hanging on to the jagged handle, he drops that because the guy he swung at has pulled out a shank. Oh, excuse uh -oh. me. 
a chink. Chink. And he and the guy starts stabbing the fuck out of him as fast as he can. All like 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 the guy getting stabbed kind of goes in like for a takedown, maybe, but that just opens the back of his head and the and his shoulders up to just and like the worst stab wound was actually his ear because ears bleed like crazy. And so there's just blood flowing mm-hmm. everywhere. And oh yeah, he was fine. Mostly That's the fine. thing. When I think about a knife wound, I think about a singular one, or sometimes a slash, which is awful cosmetically. But um people who are serious about stabbing, they'll get 12, 15, 25 stabs in oh, there. Yeah. It's Especially a real yeah. and a sharp toothbrush. <clears throat> like they know they can't get you with one. And so prison stabbings, it's like, oh, so and so was stabbed 37 times. Because it's yeah, just the knives almost 37 always suck. Three quarter inch, you know, incisions in your body. Yeah, most of the knives suck. It'll be like a really small screwdriver that's been like sharpened to a really sharp point. They're like or like like ice pick wounds, but not but it's never even long as an ice pick. It'll it it, it Nail, they'll sharpen a nail up, like literally a nail, and then put that in something like a T grip so that the nail protrudes out between the knuckles and they can punch with it. Eh. It's real I mean, troublesome. It's... Cool show, though. Cool show. It's an interesting right. premise. I, I had read that it was fake, but after watching it, I don't think that that is fake. That looks I'm not, pretty fucking legit. I had people in chat, Taylor Merck on Twitch, come hang out, guys. I had people in chat saying, like, oh, this is so fake, so fake. I, I don't even humor that. Like it's better to believe it's real, you know. I, I don't want to go into it trying to poke holes that much, unless it's no, I, really over the top obvious. I don't think it's. I don't think it's fake. I think that um, the way they edit it sometimes can be to like pump up the drama. Like maybe if something's happening and they go to like a close up shot of someone for a reaction, maybe that reaction wasn't right at that moment. Yeah. Maybe they're not actually reacting that way to what happened. But that's just to like get a narrative going. Course. But read, the, the actions that happen are real, and the prisoners are actually in there. So last night I was reading about that. I, what happened was Taylor asked if anyone ever died on the show, and I it raised my curiosity. So I started looking at it, started reading all about the show, etc. Contestants have said that certain things are are fake or misleading, and by that they mean that like like look, they acted like I was in really hot water for this thing. It actually wasn't like they they they, they pumped some music in and made it seem like a bigger deal than it really was. They acted like the cause of my hot water was this thing. Like, actually, you know, they were mad about something else and they just string together some misleading editing and to mm-hmm. make it look like the anger was caused by that. Or they go, you know, yeah, take a couple events and turn them into one bigger one with a longer yelling match. So, so yeah. that, but all the footage is real. It, better yet, it's edited, but not scripted. I think that's, a, there that's you the phrasing I'm looking for. Certainly so, yeah. And, and so that definitely doesn't make it fake. Like, like, But if you look at any other reality show, like Survivor or Big Brother or anything like that, that's just fake as fuck. It's, it's so fake. It's so fake. All of it's so fake. Mm-hmm. I haven't watched Survivor since yeah, I wonder what one, level of fake think. it is. Like, like, for example, do they choose who wins the competitions? Do they... The, the, who gets voted off? Is that chosen by the producers or the contestants? Like, where is the fake begin and end? I would say that all of that is legit. Like the voting and the uh, the the winners and stuff is is legit. But the way that things are presented to us are completely different. And they might suggest that like contestants don't know a thing when in reality, like Jeff Probst just walked over there and like, all right, so here's what we're gonna do. Y'all act like you're hearing this for the first time when I tell it, when we do it in a minute. But I, it, just a lot of it is scripted, really, like 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 reactions and mm. uh, and all that stuff. It's it's super fake. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna watch more of it. That show's awesome. Oh, that show's great. I, I like that really show a lot. The- <laughs> so about the uh, about the thing of like them uniting and everything in there, like my first sixty days, you know, I, I picked up on Calvin and I picked up on uh, on Matt, um, pretty much. Now. Within the first ten minutes of uh, of hearing them talk and seeing them and everything, did you say how? Yeah. What was the so, giveaway? Uh, Calvin, like he was just asking me a lot of questions, like uh, like a, like an interviewer would, you know, like a reporter, like, mm-hmm. oh, what kind of family do you come from? Like, uh, uh, just asking so many questions that I was just like, nah, man, you, there's something off about you. 
And I'm just gonna I'm gonna play this one out and we'll see how how it comes around. But uh and then Matt when he came in, his story, just the story, I was like, Yep, yeah, all right, he's uh he's one of us. So then I kind of brought everybody together and I was like, Hey, look, like, you know, I just want you guys to know I got you guys' back if anything ever happens in here. Um <clears throat> and Calvin just he he almost cried like he was so excited he you know him and I we 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 gave each other a hug um but man having somebody in there that's that's big you know just having somebody that you can talk to because i mean at the end of the day you're in character right like i'm i'm being somebody that i'm not so being able to actually like break character and go talk to someone and just be real with them mm -hmm. uh i mean it definitely gave a little bit of clarity in my mind um the second <laughs> season um Andrew and uh, Alan, when they came in, I knew from the minute they walked into the pod without even talking to them who they were and why they were here. Um, and I chose not to actually uh, reveal that to them. So that was pretty that was pretty difficult, man. That added to my uh, mm -hmm. to my depression in there because I watched them. I actually like, you know, from afar, watched them actually come together and figure one another out. And I was like, man, that's pretty cool. I just I just watched you guys kind of mm -hmm. like release that information to each other um so yeah it was it was it was pretty cool and the whole time they're thinking like man that marine don't mess with him i don't know what he did but <laughs> all the black guys yeah. and the white guys seem to like him <laughs> so and that and it was really cool i, I wish that uh a and e would have done a little bit better of a job on uh on kind of revealing me to um the cast on uh on the reunion because mm -hmm. none of them guys knew um so they brought them all out first, but they didn't even have cameras rolling. They didn't, they didn't even record any of it. And then I came out lastly and, and, uh, the, their faces just were just like, no way. Like <laughs> what in the world? I never in a million years expected you. So. Yeah, I, I've, I, I know I would do poorly in there, but I know that I wouldn't do the chick thing. I would at least try. What would, you know, why would you, what would why? be your downfall? Oh, Tyler, mm -hmm. what would be your downfall in doing poorly in prison or jail either? Being a smart ass or something like say, accidentally saying something <laughs> being like bitch or, or something like that accidentally. And then suddenly I'm target on my back. You try to I explain would, like the joke was too good not to say what that doesn't happen to you. No, my I was doing an be... impression of your voice as a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but, but my my question would be: Why try? Why like make your why make your time in there any more difficult or risky than it needs to be? Like if they're paying me a bonus, okay, sure. If they're like, yeah, we're gonna this is your base pay, and this is your pay if you find X, Y, and Z. All right, well that's a different story. But if they're like, yeah, you're part of a TV show, you get paid this. We want you to find some drug dealers, maybe some weaponry, any intel you can find would be good. All right, do I get paid for more more for that? Oh no, no. All right, well I'm gonna <laughs> sit over and play fucking checkers for sixty days. There's yeah. no way I'm like gonna act suspiciously ar around anybody. I know you're right. There was, there was a point where actually production pulled me in for an interview, and they said, uh, "You do know we're filming a, like a reality show, right?" And I was like, <laughs> "What do you mean?" They're like, You've just been hanging out in your room reading a book. I'm like, I'm in jail. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, you already signed the papers. I'm getting paid. <laughs> yeah. I, I, well, I'm, I think about going into that show the same way I imagine losing a bunch of weight. Where I'll just think like, man, that would be sick. And then reality oh. comes around. It's like, nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> like, I guarantee I would, I would go in with like, man, I'm going to make sure I'm one of the the contestants that people like, and then after like a day or maybe even like 40 minutes, I'm like, no, I'm going to try and survive and not get beat up. <sighs> would be my modus You operator. come out of there with some teardrop tattoos or something. You go the complete opposite hey, direction. You yeah. come out that way, I got, I got teared, <laughs> totally shaved, just no hair whatsoever. Yeah, I've got, I talked about that before where I was like, like they're indu inducting you into the brotherhood and you're like, yeah, you know, Make, make me earn those swastikas. Start out with just an eagle, but make it look, you know, kind of like the American eagle. <laughs> like not too, not too angular, please. Oh, per, no, no. no. <laughs> Let me that. Put a big eighty-eight on your back. You're like, what does this mean? I don't worry about it. Mm. <laughs> My favorite player is Patrick Kane. Uh, <laughs> get a swastika. I have to turn it into a Windows logo. 
I just fucking love Vista, dude. <laughs> Nobody else did, but I stand. <laughs> you know, there a full body portrait of Adolf Hitler on your back. <laughs> That's Charlie Chaplin. It's Charlie Chaplin. It's just, it's Hitler. Hitler's Chaplin stand. He's got the cover up where he's got the cane and the top hat and everything to like make it right. No, but I don't want to spend the money. I've got Hitler and full Nazi fucking you know, regalia. And then all I do is add the hat. <laughs> <laughs> but he's still sick he's still wearing there. the jacket, he's a... <laughs> yeah, the jacket. No, it's he's giving uh, the salute and everything <laughs> like, no you don't remember Charlie Chapman from that role uh, Hitler, yeah. <laughs> Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> like, was he even alive around then yeah probably probably yeah oh yeah <laughs> absolutely he was yeah yeah well that would that would be very tough to to have someone approach you and want you to have them do that's what I would fear the most is going in, having somebody wanting you to do a favor and knowing they've got a bunch of heavy hitters behind them and being like, what do I even do? Do I, I, I can't say, I guess I, they would tell you, the guards would tell you to say no. But in the moment, I feel like I'd be like, yeah, dude, I'll fucking get you a Tylenol from the, the place. And then before I know it, I'm giving hand jobs to, to Arian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I fell in, I fell in a similar situation when it, when my tablet got broke, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if, if you guys watched that uh, yeah. that part, but uh, so the guy's name Swole broke broke the tablet, slid it underneath my door, and then was like, "Oh man, you must have stepped on it or something when you opened your door." I'm like, "Yeah, that didn't happen, dude." But all of like the Bloods, the Crips, the like GD, like everybody came together and they were like, "Hey, look, like we're gonna roll on this dude, but we need you to make make that first move." And uh, like I'm sitting in my 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 cell thinking like. Well, I can't be a bitch, yeah. like, but I also like can't just go out there and just blast this dude for no reason either, you know. <laughs> and I mean, these dudes were talking about like shanking him with mop hand, like you know, breaking the mop, uh, mop stick, you know, dropping the mop bucket off the top balcony. I mean, I'm like, what if this dude ends up dead? And I threw <laughs> the first punch, like, uh, yeah, you're, you're about you to be on six thousand days in. <laughs> yeah, how'd it work out? What'd you do? Well, actually, so there was a lot of issues that he was causing in our pod. Um, I mean, he was uh, hijacking a lot of people, just taking taking everybody's commissary. Um, and he was actually uh, even intimidating the guys, the trustees that were delivering food. Um, so he had he had an altercation with one of the trustees from dinner. Um, and the whole like him breaking the, the, my, uh, tablet happened after dinner. So when we got locked up that night, the, uh, green team actually came in and pulled him out. So it worked out perfect. And everybody was like, man, why did he get pulled out? And I was like, Oh, I guess it was because of that, uh, trustee, that altercation he had with that trustee, but most likely it was because of the altercation with, with, you know, myself mm -hmm. and a combination of everything else. But yeah, that was really fortunate. That that panned yeah, out. That absolutely. Way. They they knew you were like you told them you were only in for sixty days, right? Or or no, at that point. No. Yeah, nobody knows how long you're going to be in jail unless you went to court. And I hadn't been to court yet, so um, you know. And that's the other thing, man. Those inmates they know the they know the system. They know like you know what your crime is, how long you'll probably be there. Um, so they were like, "Oh man, you'll probably only be here for like a month, month and a half tops," you know. Um, and then like, as my case progressed, like, you know, like my, my sentencing, I was like, man, I'm getting close. You know, I started like building like, you know, these stories like, oh yeah, you know, I've been in talk, talks with my lawyer. Um, you know, he's, he's actually fighting it. And he's saying that we're not taking any, any plea bargains or anything like that. You know, we're fighting this whole thing all the way through. So it's getting pushed, you know, further and further. And then, um, at, you know, when I actually stayed longer, I was like, man, how am I going to push this? Like 60 days. That's about a maximum sentence for what I did, you know, What'd you do? Yeah. but uh, I don't even remember what I, I, how I kind of worked that one in, but I, I, everybody believed me. So what, what, what was, was your, your supposed crime? Story? So my cover story was, uh, that like an ex-girlfriend had taken a bunch of jewelry from, uh, my family and she had threatened to sell it. And I was like, no, so I, I drove there. I knocked on her door. Um, she opened the door 
And then when she tried closing it, I stopped the door, which is breaking and entering. I don't know if anybody knows that or not, but that is technically mm-hmm. breaking and entering. If you stop someone from closing their own their door, um, so that's breaking and entering. And her boyfriend was home, who he was a police officer, but he was off duty at the time. Um, he came out. Him and I got into a physical altercation. Uh, the police came, and then all of the police are his buddies. So we went to Fulton County instead of being. Uh, I don't even remember where I, I was locked up originally. So, hmm. you see, you told that really well, and I'm glad we got to the cover story part because that's something I think is hilarious about this whole show. Is you can tell in early seasons they were giving cover stories like, "Hey, what?" So they could their inmates could ask, "What are you in for?" And they'll be like, "Oh, I got caught armed robbery in the road. jewelry store." And then they, I, I, caught, I stole a couple grand worth of stuff, and they caught me driving down, uh, you know, Stevenson Street right there in Atlanta or, or wherever it was. And they'd be like, "Oh, okay." And then because in the early seasons the inmates were like, "Yeah, that's really simple." By the time you get to like season five, they are sabotaging the shit out of these contestants. Where they'll be like, "Hey, what are you in for?" And he's like, "Well, unbeknownst to me, you cannot skydive on Sundays in Connecticut, and <laughs> I'm here now because of that." Uh, so I'll be in at least 60 days and it's like, oh man, this motherfucker, let's rape him. Like, it's like that level. Did you really? Have you noticed that? I'm sure you did. They, they fuck I people. I haven't watched a lot of the seasons Wait. after my own. I didn't oh, follow really? your, what you were saying to it. Why is that fucking them? Is it because they're not tough enough? Is there? No, just because it, they can not poke that. holes in it. They make it yeah. so like in, by season five, they're making it so convoluted and complex that the inmates will be like, wait, you, you said earlier that you did theft. Wait, mm-hmm. and the only charge was theft? That's not how that works. You would also well, get intimidation because you were carrying this. Why Why the hell are, aren't you there for that? And like the inmates know absolutely. enough. And then the contestant gets tripped off because they only have the memorized script they got. And so they don't know the ins and outs of the legal yeah, they've system. They've got the broad strokes. So like, yep. there's the one guy whose story was that he had ran a stop sign on yep. like I-75 or something yeah. like that. Yeah, I think I got <laughs> and, and like... Oh, those interstate stop signs. They're like... They ain't no stop sign on 75, bro. Uh, yeah. yeah, there was. I ran it. <laughs> and there's like, no, nah, I don't sound right. I'm like, not right at all. What are you exactly right? Because then it showed the little overhead camera in the inmate cell being like, motherfucker said he ran a stop sign on the interstate. How the fuck <laughs> yeah. did you run a stop sign on the interstate? Or uh, of all the contestants of what you've seen, because you, you didn't watch after years, who kind of pissed you off the most in how shitty they were at it? If there was anybody where you're just like, man, this guy's just fail after fail. Hmm. I mean, to be honest, uh, I watched a couple episodes from the first season. I mean, like two tops. And then I watched my season and I watched my season literally just like last year. Um, and then I watched one or two episodes of the last couple of seasons. So I really don't, I don't, mm-hmm. I can't say, you know, anybody, I mean, I thought I did the worst to be honest. I don't know why I, I stayed in. I don't know why they chose me. Maybe I was the only one that decided to, I don't know. They did not ask the other contestants to stay in. I can tell you that <laughs> the reason they kept, picked you is because you were the only one who wasn't knocking on death's door by the end of the 60 days. Yeah. Like, maybe. Everybody else was almost about to fall apart, but that's really cool. It only has to be more fun than prison. If it's an upgrade. All right. Boy. You're right. Yeah, it only has to be more fun than prison. <laughs> Get a little like Settlers of Catan board in there, something like that. And then someone would make a shank out of it somehow and ruin the fun. Yeah. They, are board games allowed or is cards the only thing? So you never see cards any- and then uh, they have chess. Nobody or ever checkers. tried to shave the chess or checker pieces into something? Yeah. It was checkers. Yeah. Plastic. We had a bunch of games. Like we had like maybe eight different board games. They were, uh, you know, like mon- mostly Monopoly was the big one. They got played Monopoly and like card games. Were, like, How does Monopoly not lead to violence? Yeah, uh, the white Monopoly guys played Monopoly. Of family. The white guys played Monopoly. <laughs> <laughs> Would he like that answer? Hold yeah. Oh, I got. Yeah, I feel like it got past a lot of guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, you know, they didn't gamble on Monopoly. They just played for fun. You know, there was no, there was usually nothing riding on it, as far as I could tell. Uh, but poker was always gambling. You know, it was always it was always gambling for like the commissary items, most max, yep. which could be like traded in for like whatever you actually wanted. 
When I place myself in prison, thinking about how I do, first of all, overall, not very well. But one mistake I wouldn't make, I don't know why people always do, is getting in debt. Like, just don't have things that you can't afford, period. Stop yeah. there. Don't save your money or you don't have to have a Snickers bar. Suddenly, Nate gives me a Snickers bar and now I own butt sex and we could just have avoided that whole situation. Yeah, that better have been the tastiest Snickers ever oh no it wasn't it was the almond one (laughs) my best friend friend before i went in uh he actually went to prison and he said hey look man i'm gonna tell you right now you go in there there's a snickers bar on your pillow you walk out you hold that snickers bar as high as you can and you yell hey i don't know who snicker bar this is (laughs) i'm gonna set it down right here and i'll go back to my room (laughs) (laughs) i was so paranoid about that but like I just ran into some nice people like in, in jail, <laughs> in jail. There was a guy that I had gone to high school with. Like he was like three years younger than me. And he was like, you want a Snickers bar? And I was like, no. Uh, <laughs> he was like, All right, man. I got a crackle. You want almond joy? Well, like, what? You, you clearly hate Snickers. Like, <laughs> Are you a Twix guy? Uh, is, it, is it the peanuts you don't like? I, mean, I don't know what nuggets are genuine. exactly. <laughs> you keep your yeah. nuggets to yourself. Some guy just genuinely trying to give you a candy bar. Yeah, <laughs> literally just, just being like cool about it and just trying to hook me up with a fucking candy bar because I didn't have like a you go in too to hard me. and you're like, Steve, now you got you know I gotta fight you. And you're <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. At least you had games. Like that that probably passed the time. Well, now you read books. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I just read books. I just read. I didn't want to get involved with the I didn't know how to play spades. I didn't either, man. Quite. Um, and uh, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> and like, they didn't play spades for fun. Uh, they played for spades for money. So it was like, I don't want to learn a game while going into. I wouldn't go into debt because I could just afford it to pay off whatever I, I lost, probably. But yeah. and also like like some of the guys that played were the scary people that that actually didn't like me. So I had to stay away from yeah. the game for the most part. Um, so I, I, I watched TV or I fucking read or I slept. Yeah, that's it. But you also didn't have a mission to fulfill from the sheriff, which I always like when the people in the game take that mission a little too seriously where they're like, you know, I really want to go home, but I got to stay here for the mission. And I want to be yeah, like, you really don't. You think that these guys don't know? These guys work here all day, every day. You think they don't know a little more about the workings on? It's like, no, they just have to tell you there's a mission so that you don't do what a lot of the women do, which is they'll be like, I'm on 60 days in. I'll be like, you do. Oh, me three. Let's join a pod together and do each other's hair for the next 49 days. <laughs> and like, that's what it very often is in the woman's pod. Yeah. I actually, no, I won't say very often. I'll say 100% of the time. I, <laughs> yeah. I've never watched a season. Where I feel like it's like the guys every once in a while will be like, oh, dude, I know you're in there too. And they'll be like, oh, I know. All right, well, I'll catch you around because this is suspicious. But the women, they feel like they finally got their click. And so like it, often it's a problem with the guards where they're like, you know, Stephanie, Samantha and uh, Jasmine, they're not doing the, the missions right. We got we to gotta mix it up. And within two seconds, it's like, no, they're back in the pods. <laughs> smoking the tampon juice or whatever the fuck but at do. the same time tampon like, juice sounds like blood <laughs> yeah you're right that was a gross phrase <laughs> at the same time i don't blame them like i probably do the Not exact same fucking thing because like like some of the, like you're either gonna be good at like finding out some actual actionable intel or you're not and like like that's gonna be determined real quick whether anybody's gonna trust you or not and like some of those girls it's like Nobody's going to fuck with you. Nobody's going to, I mean, you know, nobody's going to work with you. Nobody's going to give you anything. Nobody's going to tell you anything that they don't, they wouldn't want someone else to know because they don't trust you. You might as well braid each other's hair. Cause, cause like so many times I see them like go to the sheriff or uh, the warden or whoever they talk to at the very end of the show. And they're like, yeah, I've got some great information. There's drugs in there. And he's like, oh, really? Well, who's selling them? Oh, I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> but they're everywhere. <laughs> they're what everywhere. kind of drugs? I don't know. They smelled funny. They smelled funny. Yeah. 
They have no drug experience. The first night, I thought a skunk had found its way. Into the bar. <laughs> <laughs> and after the fifth night, I thought this might be drug. <laughs> it, oh, the skunk only comes out at night. <laughs> <laughs> they are nocturnal. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would hate to go to prison. It looks like, and I like uh, all the people who go into that show. Maybe three days in, they're like, you know, the worst part about prison. It's almost always in the woman's cell. If I recall, they're like, you know, the worst part of our prison is that I can't leave and I don't get to pick when I do anything. And it's like, yeah, <laughs> no, I, I'm pretty sure that's the only thing about prison. <laughs> you just <laughs> find prison, you asshole. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah, can't. I never have I pick what I want to do. I almost never find the women's side to be entertaining at all because, no. like, for <laughs> one thing, they're they're rarely at they're rarely even close to as violent as the men's side. So like the stakes mm -hmm. are just inherently lower, but also like, it seems like most of their drama is like, like, like bullshit. Like, like it's all bullshit. Don't get me wrong. But like theirs is like, just, Oh, she looked at me funny. She thinks she's better than me. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's like, really? Like, 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 they're over there stabbing each other over potato chips in the in the in the men's pod, and, and these girls can't <laughs> fucking get along and like paint their nails at the same time, or like like the contestants are getting all snooty because somebody's smoking uh, some cologne up upstairs and they don't like it, or they can't sleep well enough. It's like I need my sleep at night. It's like what what fucking for? Sleep tomorrow? <laughs> like, like why would? You got a big day. You got to get up <laughs> early and head over to the what? Come the card table. Get the fuck out of here. Go to sleep and don't rub anybody the wrong way. You got 60 days. What would you say they were smoking? Yeah. It sounded like cologne. Cologne. They're, they're, they're smoking fake fucking weed. Oh, okay. Like spice? They were smoking real like weed and, uh, and Fulton. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They were smoking real weed where I was, too. They, were, well, they, had, they smoked both. And nobody but... cared, I guess, right? Because you can smell it far away. So actually, um, man, they, they had a system down in Fulton. They'd sit over a toilet and they'd pump all the water out. So that way it was like a natural vacuum. And then they just sit over that toilet and then they'd smoke that, you know, the, the weed and then they'd throw it down the toilet. And then they had these socks with uh, like soap bars and baby powder in them. And then they'd sit there and just pop them. And then it was just like a nap, uh, air freshener. It would just release and it would smell like powder and you wouldn't even tell anybody was smoking. I yeah. love the ingenuity of these things where it's oh, like, what 100%. do we have? A little baby powder, soap, and a sock. But what do we want to really do? Smoke weed. We can figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> that one is impressive. Sometimes I'm, mm -hmm. they, I think people get too excited about their ingenuity. Like, man, man, get this, get this. They took rebar and they sharpened it on a stone. These guys are so fucking clever. And it's like, well, I don't know. That's some caveman shit right there. Like, I'm not too impressed. Yeah, Monkey that could do that. The coolest thing I saw as far as like ingenuity MacGyver shit is uh, the lighters that they would make in prison um, where they had like uh, a couple of batteries, batteries like, yeah. attached together and then like some really thin wire that they would touch together and the wires Eat would get up, red, red hot, hot and then they touch it at the end of the cigarette and they could get it hot enough to like spark up a cigarette and everybody had one and they, they were made out of like broken radios and shit because they've got you know, where you put the batteries into like any device, like, or even a remote control, there's like, there's that whole setup, right? Where the batteries go into a, sl to, to slots, they'd have that and then tape wrapped around that and the battery stuck in it. And then wires coming out, touching together. That shit looked cool to me. I wanted one of those. I wasn't smoking, but I thought that was fucking cool. Yeah. That everybody pretty... had one. I really didn't like the contraband in the female ward or pod or whatever in the season i was watching most recently where they're like oh we're gonna do some drugs crack sticks and what it is is tampon paper rolled around the inside of an e-cig and then we're gonna smoke that and it's i'm like wait wait so there were no drugs added it's just you're making yourself sick with the amount of nicotine by getting rid of the governor that, that gives it a little bit at a time it sounds oh. it sounds like smoking like five cigarettes at once and just feeling ill more than that they're burning it rather than vaping it so like instead of vaporizing like nicotine gel or whatever and inhaling like a nice vapor that like slowly gives you like five milligrams a hit or whatever the fuck it does they're smoking that thing they're burning the part that is soaked in nicotine wrapped in a tampon roller or whatever the hell it's got to be getting them pretty fucking tipsy pretty high 
Um, the, this, the women's pod that was, that was really jumping off was the one where they had all the pills and they were, everybody was like, uh, cheeking their pills and crushing them up and mixing them with that Kool-Aid. Mm. That looked fun. That looked fun. The, the whippets, except like they talk about the drugs they were using and they never seemed like fun. It's like, oh, we got a bunch of Zoloft, a little Prozac. And <laughs> oh, what do we got here? Oh, well, Butrin. We're going to mush all this up together. And it's like, these are all just antidepressants. <laughs> I got some Prilosec. I'd be profit and aspirin. This isn't fun at all. <laughs> yeah, 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 but we're not going to have headaches for days. Woody. <laughs> so they don't, I guess they don't give them access to stuff like NyQuil that they could just get fucked up on right away right you probably couldn't buy no. at the commissary no no they probably they probably could let you do that if you ever accidentally taken too much nyquil when you have the flu or something yeah accidentally it's really not fun you feel weird in a bad way like you you, you feel like the ground's moving it, it's not fun everything's wonky yep yeah. So yeah, but if let, you're, if if you're locked yeah. up, wonky sounds good. What's up, Trey? Hello there. You made it yeah, out of the Uber. Too. See, you've gotten to a hard line. Very nice. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. We are. We <laughs> are on the, still dead. We are on uh, live right now, so don't admit to any crimes or anything. Well, in okay, current ones. Thanks. Great to know. <laughs> 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 yeah, we're we're going through Nate's story and everything. So you guys were in there together at the same time during sixty days in. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, Nate. That's that's my bro. Were you pissed at all when you found out that he was a contestant on a TV program? <laughs> no, nah, because like Nate was cool. I I really honestly did not know it was sixty days in. No. That was crazy. But, you know, it's like, it is what it is. Nate cool with me, you know. I talked to Nate. We still in contact, you know. Clearly, yeah. Even in the back of Ubers. So, when did, uh, I, I, I want to follow that little line. When, when, when did you find out that Nate was a contestant on a TV show? And what was your reaction? <laughs> When I watched this show, cause oh I shit, because <laughs> I seen like the you know like the previews of the show, and we we're all on there and stuff, and like I actually go and watch the show because everybody keeps sending it to me like, oh my god, you on sixty days, and I'm like, oh my god, it's so embarrassing, <laughs> and, and I see Nate, I'm like, what? I ain't gonna lie, I never would have thought that Nate was a contestant. Nate was just so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Nate was chilling, bro. Nate did his time like a real man. He just stayed to himself, minded his business, you know? So Nate when they were trying dude. to get all the inmates in on it, they're just going around having you sign something, I assume, being, and you're just thinking, oh, this is going to be some boring documentary that they're going to show in some school class. And then it's on TV. You know what they said to us? So we gonna, we gonna give y'all extra time quickly, out. We have to go down to the conference. And yeah. it's a it's a show on document. It's a documentary on incarceration in America. So I'm like, oh, it's probably like, you you know, it locked up so channel fifty two type shows. You know what I'm uh, saying? Exactly and it turned true. out to be sixty days in. So I was like, oh, wow, oh, like that's crazy. Yeah, that well, it's a good show. You said it was embarrassing. What was so embarrassing about the first time you saw your own face on up there on it? Because <laughs> now everybody was gonna know that I was in jail. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, like, oh my enough. gosh! And now everybody like just sends it to me, like my fans and stuff. Like they always send it to me. People will stop me random, randomly in public, like. Yo, I seen you on this TV show. I'm like, yeah, that's me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how much longer were you in there after Nate left? Um, actually, I got kicked out of the program after that fight, and then I did. I ended up doing eight months. I got locked up March, and I got out in October. I don't remember when we were kicked out of the it. program. What do you mean? Well, I. I called it a program because it was 60 days in, but I got <laughs> kicked out in the dorm and went to the hole because, you know, my take. You got into a fight. Like, 
that we were fighting. Yeah. So were you in the hole for a long time? No, nah, just uh, 30 days for failure to um, comply, something like that. That sounds like so a long like time. Was it rough? I mean, jail is just rough in general, you know? You but, didn't find you the know, hole to be didn't... extra bad? I mean, it was just like I can't order any, like, gas station for real, yeah. and I can't, I can't call nobody for real. You tell me the worst Take part about solitary confinement is the lack of gas station food? Yeah, absolutely. When you're in jail, you look forward to that gas station. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I promise. I promise. Nate will tell you. What was the hole like there? Are you in? Is it solitary or you have a uh, uh Oh, yeah, it's a 23 cellmate. and 1. It's 23 and 1. You're in the cell. You might be in the cell with two people, but I was in the cell by myself. You know, I caught it good. But usually yeah. two people in it. Where I was, it was two men to a cell um, for uh, if, if you got put in the hole, or they call it the shoe there, and uh, it was like like you couldn't even flush the toilet, so you had to like ask a guard to flush the toilet from the outside. That way, you couldn't get rid of any contraband or anything. Like if it came down to like you flushing a shiv or something, they they wanted to make sure that like yeah, it's shit in the bowl. You would have to walk over and check your poops. Oh. Yeah. What a terrible job. They weren't going to let, they weren't going to, that toilet got flushed when a guard came by and you asked him to flush your toilet from the outside. Oh, so you'd almost have to be timing your shits. Like, if you know this guy's <laughs> not coming around by. for another two hours, it's like, God, and I got a whole other hour and 45 minutes. And there's two of you in there. Damn. Oh, so you know there's been like piles of shit when two guys yeah. can't hold their prison food. Once oh, it yeah. breaks the surface, you've got a problem. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. how that works. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Maybe it's like, yeah, like a like an iceberg of shit. Yes, <laughs> yeah, it's the tip of the iceberg that causes all your problems. <laughs> I mean, maybe those those Nords have something. You know, H- how many fights are happening in Nordic prisons? Very None. few. They got Xbox. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, they yeah. Got Xbox. They got Nordic shows with like hot weather ladies. Like this, this is the this is the way of the future. We need to start emulating that, not Brazil. Or whatever we're emulating now. <laughs> I just know that, like, watching Oz, I'm like, there's no way the whole is they kick you in there physically naked into a concrete wall and then, like, throw biscuits at you twice a week. Like, it can't possibly be what it is. There'd be a lot of dead people. But, I mean, yeah, the way you guys are describing it, having to wait to flush your shit isn't as bad as the HBO show from 1996. No. <laughs> You know? Speaking of really terrible, annoying, awful people, I, I just looked back up to confirm, make sure. And that guy, Steve, on your season, season five, he is the dickhead that we talked about, I think, on PKN, where he was in there for maybe three hours. And then a couple of inmates, he's he, first of all, he's covered up like a bitch, just saying, and his cover story is that he's listening for, for contraband info. And then a couple of inmates in there start fucking with him and saying, like, yeah. We're bringing acid into the into the prison, <laughs> and because they, they, they know that. Oh, and he filmed. thought it was like the biggest find in the history of freaking prison finds. Oh, yeah. and, and we know how big of a problem LSD is in our prison system. <laughs> you hear about it nonstop, and he thought that they were being real when it's like you dip a, 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 a birthday card in LSD, and then you spray a little bit of Dolce and Gabbana on there, and then ship it in there, and then I guess everybody's tripping. Like, and then he immediately does the ah, my neck. My fucking neck or my shoulder. Oh, oh shit, my shoulder. What was the when you finally saw him, I guess, on the footage or in that little round table, what was your kind of perspective on it? Was it just this guy's a bitch? Okay, this guy, okay, just to let you know that uh when you guys watched the reunion or the round table, as you called it, uh, we didn't know about him until uh the reunion. And mm-hmm. um um uh, Man, the guy actually had a, as crazy as it sounds, he had a good edit. Um, from the <laughs> really? So he looks terrible. <laughs> he was, he was an, even a bigger, a bigger D bag, man. Um, and, uh, in fact, I'll actually share, share some other stuff with you guys before we get done with this conversation about him, just to show you how big of a D bag he is. Mm-hmm. But, um, he just came in blaming everybody but himself, blaming production, uh, talking about, how when they pulled him out, he jumped the producer, and I'm like, no, you didn't, dude. 
because you would have really like been in Pinal County. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like for real, for real. Yeah. The, the, that, that would be kind of cool though. He'd be the first. Oh, that'd be hilarious. Series <laughs> history. First guy to um, go to prison. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, man, he was just, he came in, he was arrogant and, uh, he was even worse than, as I said, the reunion portrayed. Cause I think, I think they were, um, the, because they started naming names of production people. And so they took all that out. Um, in fact, when he left, cause he only came in for a segment, we filmed for about 12 hours in New York, the, the reunion episode, and he was there for an hour and, uh, uh, they actually pulled him out and chauffeured him out before they'd even let us get a break. But the guys just, you know, I try to, I'm, I'm, I'm the king of second chances. And I guess it's, it's because of my faith or whatnot that I try to give everyone a second chance. But mm-hmm. he recently faked his own death. Um, <laughs> yeah. what, what did he do? No what one did noticed. <laughs> <laughs> no one noticed. <laughs> like, so, uh, he so got distraught like, when he realized there wasn't a funeral. They had a barbecue. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> man, I mean, he, we had a going away party on the day after he died. <laughs> um, no, but uh, but yeah. So he just uh, I, I woke up and a fan sent me this uh, obituary, and you know I, I was like, man, that sucks, dude. You know I don't wish any ill will. No matter no matter no matter how much I don't like, I never wish ill will on somebody. And, uh, and, uh, that's exactly what happened here is, uh, I woke up to an obituary and I freaked out. So I started trying to call him and all this. He wouldn't answer. He turned his Facebook page into a, what do you call it? Remembering me Facebook page. <laughs> what an answer. Like, oh my God. So, so I actually, uh, you know, I was, I was freaked out, man. And, and, and so I posted on his Facebook page and, and some of his friends, man, hit me up on messenger. This is how big of a D bag he is. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I've known him for like freaking 20 30 40 years man and and um so i had this girl and she just like wigged out on me and and i'm like i'm sorry i'm like you know i just posted it because a fan a fan told me that he you know showed me his obituary (laughs) and she's like oh my god i'm gonna go to his house i'm gonna i'm gonna go check it out and all this stuff and uh i go to work and i come out of work and uh i have a message about how big of an a-hole i was and this that and the other because i freaked her out because he wasn't really dead (laughs) Did you what figure out why he that? did it? No, nah, he's still supposedly dead. So I mean, <laughs> he's, well, he's dude, still playing sticking... dead, so we can't get a word out of him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sticking with a across. failed fake death, pretty balls. Yeah, oh, he's, he's, he's playing it out to the extreme. I even called, and a girl picked up his phone, and she's like, "Oh, uh, yeah, I'll have him call you back." And he's never called me back, so I guess he's still dead. Of course not. He's dead. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, so it is what it is, you know. It. it He's he's even a bigger a bigger jerk in real life. Is he the one that yeah. was the private eye, Taylor? Yeah, he was the one really going in, just saying yes. he was hard as shit, and he that he rainer. had been. I've been attacked while tailing people, and my first thought was, "Then you're a bad PI mm-hmm. because you shouldn't be tailing them to the point that they get so upset they not only lose you, they get out, confront you, and beat you up." that's you're a bad private investigator so yeah he, that guy right. sucked he was my least favorite he lo- lowest in the power rankings by far uh i don't well if we're going on the the, the whole show no no you go by season otherwise oh, okay. it's just convoluted because remember there was that one guy who didn't even make it into the pod like 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 Gerson. He, he cracked in the uh in the holding cell no he cracked I- in a marriott he didn't even get in. Oh, I wasn't even going to make fun of that poor little man. Uh, yeah, he didn't even make it in. He was at the hotel. That little man did not need to be in there. And I've called him little man yeah. three times in a row now for a very good reason. He is the most tiny human being I've ever seen who didn't. He, how, how, how sm- did you, did you see that guy with your own eyes? How tiny is he? I don't know if he was on the same season. As, oh, as okay. yeah, I didn't think he was, but, but he no, knew no, he was named, so that, that led me astray. When, when he was given his excuse, he said, I'm 5'3 and little. I, I will give it. We're losing you a bit, Mark. We lost you on that one. He knew his limitations. Oh, are you? Hello? Hello? Yeah, hmm. I, think, I, think, I think you're okay. Yeah, you were saying, you were saying he knew his limitations. Well, he didn't before he signed up. He learned his limitations. He learned as he was watching free porn at that Marriott that night. <laughs> did he do that? I don't know um, if he did that. But he, uh, he, he, no, I, 
he failed at the Marriott. He didn't even get pretend arrested yet. <laughs> he said, I don't really want to do it. And uh, I just want to go back to my job making candy at the Wonka factory. <laughs> I, I don't know like here. This is a bad I idea. You guys, can you we guys can hear you now. now. Yeah, you're good now. Okay, sorry about that. I, I'm going to give the guy credit where credit's due, though. He knew his limitations. Because let's be honest. If he had gone into Fulton <laughs> County, and I'm from the Atlanta, Georgia area, so I know Fulton County. Dude, I wouldn't have called. In fact, just to give you kind of a heads up, when you go through the whole interview process, the only reason why I agreed to go to Pinal County is I did some research. If they told me, like, Fulton County or doggone uh, uh, Rikers Island or L.A. County, I wouldn't have done it. But yeah. So I give the guy at least credit to say, hey, I'm not, I can't do this. That guy's biggest so, limitation is being able to get on roller coasters. Jesus, Taylor. <laughs> 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 Why can't I ride the Batman? <laughs> you're really you're way nicer than me. Fuck that guy. You just, <laughs> we're not entertaining in any way. You should have left the spot open for someone who would have taken it more seriously. Because there was someone who yeah. got booted from that shit who would have actually give a fuck, given a fuck. And, and yeah. that guy did not. That was disappointing. But are, are you sure I, that he wasn't good content in a different way? You know, like not everyone needs to be a surprise success. That that's that's just one piece of the puzzle in a good show. I now agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. but, but if you if you look at the stare the the casting of each season, we're all pretty much the same people. They have mm -hmm. to cast the the tough guy. They got to cast the awkward weird guy. For me, you know, I can think of past people. A lot of people have compared me because they say I look like uh, Jeff from season one, and Jeff's a great dude. Just the guy that got hit. He was the security guard that wanted to be the uh, corrections officer. Oh, and. Uh, and, but you always have the goofy guy, which was me and I guess Jeff and uh, uh, Matt's son from season five. You know, the, 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 the you know, the father son couple, you know, they, they have it seems like they have their own stereotypes that they want to put in. And uh, but I think it's here that really di dictates how well you'll do. Who was the really and, athletic uh, black guy, Taylor? Did, did, oh, oh, I, if, if you remember, Mark, tell me I, I, which season on Mark's season. You I'm, I'm, my seasons are a little mixed up. I watched him on your stream, though. Then it was either seasons three. It was probably seasons five. He or three. might have been a cop or one of David. Like, you talking about David? David. Yeah. David. I, how, how did he do? He was super well, strong. He was jacked. I think I called him a wide receiver in a different episode. Like he looked like he could be a pro athlete. Very fit. Very fit. Yeah. Oh, um, Mark's take on it. I love David. I mean, honestly, a lot of people love to talk smack about David because of how our season ended. And Woody, I don't know if you remember, but David was the guy that uh, he blew the whole season. Um, he told uh, he told the corrections officer who he supposedly who he was, and then uh, and then mm -hmm. he told one of the inmates who he was, who in turn went over back to Abner's pod because him and Abner had beef uh, in the beginning, and then started getting everybody. You know, telling everybody that there was more to Abner than uh, met the eye and almost got him jumped. So Abner actually had to tap out. In fact, that's my source of pride. I'm the big goofy guy, but I'm the last male to get pulled from the pot from uh from my season. So um nice little badge but, you got. It's true. But a lot of people talk smack about him. I don't know what happened. He's he denies a lot of it. And to be honest, with so much editing on the show, some of us don't know what to believe. Whereas, how much is truth? How much is editing? And because uh, he claims a lot of it didn't happen, um, but what I do know for a fact is I was with him. Like I love all my participants, every single one of them. But the only participant I saw on a consistent basis after the hotel and after going into jail was David. And I think the world of David. David's a great dude. He's a solid dude. Um, you know, he's still in law enforcement. Um, uh, and I know a lot. He gets a lot of hate from the uh, public as being the guy to screw up our season because, as a result of what he did, we all got pulled. But I think the world of David, man. Do you know your scheduled last date? Like, are you looking in there saying this is the day I get out and trying to make it to that? They don't tell you when you're going to get out. Um, they just say it's going to be between this day and this day. Um, you know, um, so they don't tell you a specific date. But I did do little hash. <laughs> on the uh, on the on on the bottom of my bunk, I uh, did little hash marks every single day. 
So I knew how many days I had in. Um, so, yeah. I would think yeah. you'd get lost among other hash marks from previous, <laughs> right? Or, <laughs> yeah. You, you just well, there weren't a lot of hash marks, but there was a lot of like I, I looked up at some devilish chick with bo- big boobs the entire time. Yeah, that was that was you yeah. know that was right on the scale. He was a very talented artist, and <laughs> so I put the hash marks right on her chest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, well, you deprived yourself of a big titted demon. Apparently, that stinks. Yeah. Well, well, I tried. I tried to give her Bible study, but she didn't yeah. talk. <laughs> Up. Yeah, she she was like the way you, they made it look in the show. I am so disappointed, and that's the biggest thing to me. I was I wanted to ask about the Bible study thing, and we did. And knowing that five, seven to fifteen people would show up for that, and they made yeah. you look like an absolute goober, like yeah. that is very that's really unfair. That's not cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's part of lots TV. Of people, magic. Lots of people talking about how good his Bible studies were. Lots of people. <laughs> Too afraid Andy won't show it. They were the count. greatest. They were the greatest Bible studies in the history of all Bible studies. <laughs> <laughs> I've never read it before. Personally, it's long and boring. They, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> lots of good lessons, lots of good stuff in there. <laughs> um, <laughs> game before yeah. Uh, yeah. When, when I watched it, it, it honestly it did tick me off. Uh, yes. So, my goodness. So, what was uh, what was the or Kyle? You can probably relate this better. The whole or both of you, the whole money situation. When they when you went in there initially, did they kind of prime you and say like, hey, don't go to commissary and drop, you know, big money. Yes, go there and yes. spend like $6 on ramen or something. Yeah, so just to let you know, production actually puts money on your books. Um, but they tell you in the beginning, they don't put a lot of money, like maybe 30 or $40 a week. And when you buy phone time and all that, it doesn't work out to where you, you have a lot. But yes, every every uh uh to answer your question on that uh they would tell you don't make yourself a target because the moment you go and you buy a whole store and i've watched some of these other seasons especially season six here recently where uh one guy i think it was tony got like freaking 500 ramen noodle packets and stuff like that now tony (laughs) could back it up okay tony looks like he could whoop some butt and take some names but uh, but that was a big thing that A and E said. Uh, pr- uh, production people said, "Do not make yourself a target." Um, uh, yeah, there was one guy in season three or maybe season four that, as soon as he stepped foot in, he treated it like it was supermarket sweep, and he oof. was like, "I need I need all of that, all of." The-. He just had a giant <clears throat> satchel, and immediately this one like jacked black dude, like his interview happens, and he's not someone who's in on the show. He's yeah. like, I'm, I'm going to push up on everybody. I'm pushing up on everybody in this. And immediately he like goes to that guy and is like, give me your chips. <laughs> he just, just, oh, yeah. no, give me your magazines. And the guy had a stack yeah. of magazines and he gave just, here you go. Here's all my magazines I just spent money Ooh, on. Like, what do you, what, thing. yeah. Yeah, you don't, you don't give your stuff up. Even mm-hmm. as a participant, man, the moment you give your stuff up, you make yourself a target um, because uh, they'll, they'll, they'll see you as a weak minded. And uh, so, you didn't really see a lot, but I would I would trade commissary even even uh, uh, in my season, and but I would make sure if I gave you a pack of ramen, I got two in return. So you never at any point do you yeah. So seeing some of that, but it is what it is. But once as I said, the editing is also so some sometimes so substantial that mm-hmm. it's like okay, what do I believe and what do I don't believe? Yeah, but was there a there was one season I was watching that when they have that little round table at the end, one of the woman, women did drugs, like smoked pot or did some like weird drug mixture paste. And everybody's like, oh, that's bullshit. And she was like, no, I ever, everybody liked me after that. Nobody thought I was in the program after that. Yeah. Did, were you ever offered drugs or were tempted? You don't seem like a drug user normally, but were you ever tempted? Like, man, if I do this, I'll be really in. They'll know that I'm not on this program. Okay, so no, I, I was never offered drugs, strangely enough. So I guess I was a Bible study guy. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, towards the end, and, and there's some things that, that, as far as intel that I gave the sheriff that didn't make the final cut. But uh, that, in fact, the guy Rocker, Rocker always talked about how many drugs mm-hmm. he could get. And he told me about a possible uh, or, or uh, a staff member there at Pinal County that was uh he was crooked and uh, you could get drugs off of him so i actually tried to make up a cell to where i could get it off the staff member so i could go in and just drop the i don't remember mm-hmm. what i was asking for i think i was asking for cocaine 
And uh, yeah, because I look like a cokehead, right? Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's going to be my first time. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, maybe weed. Like I got the belly for weed, but maybe not. Not. So. But anyway, you can pull um, weed off. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, some of the things you actually didn't see. Uh, there were some things that transpired, and everybody in the uh, pod turned on Rocker, and we were pretty much told if we ever talked to Rocker again, that uh, that we would uh, we would be jumped. So the entire pod turned on Rocker. I wish they had shown that, but I was actually trying to set up a cocaine deal, and I was in the process of of, of getting it done, and I probably would have had it if if he hadn't of uh, he wound up punching out an old an old guy, and uh, and. Yeah. Oh, that's content. Yeah. Why, why didn't they show that? They okay, show so we had a guy that was crazy. He was crazy. I mean, he was mm -hmm. crazy. But he was just an old, old guy, you know? You don't mess with the crazy old guy. He might was he one of the woods old. or one of... I think he was a paisa. So they did a good job of showing what, what they called Chicanos, the woods, um, and the kinsfolk. But what they didn't show was they didn't show what they call paisa. So the difference between a Chicano and a paisa is a Chicano is an American-born person of mexican heritage whereas at uh, paisa is illegal and mm. um so yeah so this guy he was just old and I, he, he just was just he just ticked off a lot of people but he was an old guy well a rocker went up to him at one point and just knocked the crap out of him and i was standing there like should i do something and uh <laughs> Yeah, I didn't do anything. No, uh, I mean, I, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Should I do something? Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. no. <laughs> yeah. So uh, he hit this guy, and the retaliation with that was uh, was basically we're going to run him out of here. He's about to get jumped. And uh, before all that transpired or anything happened, we actually got pulled. Um, so I don't know what happened to Rocker as a result of that, but I almost had a bag of cocaine. Don't do it. <laughs> Damn it! That would have been a true victory. A true, because so many times I'll see people talk about the mission, and it's like, no, like you three in particular. The, uh, maybe it was three women during your season where all they did was just. I get the seasons mixed up because I've been watching them in different orders, yeah. all chained together. Yeah. But I think it was your season where there were three women, and almost immediately, as soon as they discerned, oh, you're in the program too. It's like that was just the click. It was like we're hardly yeah. even God, you can't blame them though. Like, like that's what I do too. Like, like frankly, if the pay is the same, then fuck their mission, right? Like, I'm not gonna be getting in with anybody. And be like, hey, uh, I know I'm I'm new here, and my charges are a little bit foggy because of that whole federal hold thing. But I really want a weapon. Could you get Could you get me a weapon and also drugs of some kind, any kind, really? Just I would like. No, I'm not putting my neck out for them unless I'm getting a bonus. Now, if there was, that's how the show should be. It should be more like, all right, we're going to pay you $10,000 to do this thing. But for every piece of contraband you get for weapons, 5,000 cash. And they should, they, they should just be laying it on you. Oh, that would get me motivated. To, yeah, that yeah. would get me motivated. And I bet that would motivate yeah. you too, right? Like if they had well, told you. Who's got drugs? Oh, I'm already <laughs> gaming the system. Money? They gave you this yeah. whip. That's a shoelace. <laughs> Fuck off. It's a yes. prison whip. So that is your belt. <laughs> that is your belt. Yeah, but it's got these studs on the end. Shoot, I would have had shanks. I would have had samurai swords. I would have had what I could, man. I but but if they're just stuff, sending dude. me in for this flat fee and I meet someone who is not a degenerate piece of shit, <laughs> me and him are going to be buddies. We're going to be. We're going to sit over there and talk about not being degenerate pieces of shit and how we actually have families and we know our fathers. Like that's going to be our topic of conversation <laughs> and hope that we get to watch some March madness in between, but I'm or not cartoons. mixing it up. Yeah. Now I will actually, that's a good point. I will say that uh, one, one of the things they told us before going in, don't act like something you're not, um, you know, I'm obviously don't call it, come across as a tough guy. So if I went in there and started trying to pick a fight, I probably would have found it. So they said, you know, yeah. don't go in and act, act any different than you already are. So I just kind of went in and did what I do uh, as an awkward fist bump Bible study guy yeah. as I am. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I'm, you and you owned that, and people thought you were genuine because of it. Like, and that's yeah. why you were endearing to a lot of them because it became evident, like you're not trying to put on airs and and be a wood gangster. I well, uh, I, I I think I attracted a lot of people with my gen. You know, it's either they felt really bad for me, or 
or you know there's a lot of awkward people out there but you know i mean if i was gonna do the show my idea is i'd be like all right i'll do it but when you bring me into the pod i'm not walking in that line all Mm -hmm. chained up you put me on a dolly (laughs) chained up with a hannibal lecter mask yeah and so so many chains like that that movie con air Yes, yes, exactly like, like Shimmy and Con Air. Exactly yeah. like yeah. Con Air, and they wheel me in, and I'm thrashing around and everything. And suddenly, it's like, what's that guy have? And then they say a lot of uh, AIDS and FC. <laughs> <laughs> he'll, he'll bite yes. you. And then you know, I probably I would have got the shit beat out of me. For that. <laughs> but, you know, but no, so. nobody's gonna want you to bleed on them. Nobody's gonna want to fuck our, with that. That's all right, brother. I would have I would have given you Bible study after you got your butt kicked. <laughs> yeah, I would have been. I would have been happy to go to Bible study after getting my ass kicked. <laughs> would have been a nice little thing, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. um, you know, and as far as elevating myself to pod boss or to second in charge, that was unexpected. Literally, Josh walked up to me one day. He's like, "Hey, man, can I talk to you?" And I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, man, I'm getting ready to get out of here. In fact, it was uh, the following week, and he said, uh, "He said, look, dude." You get along with everybody. Um, you know, I don't want the white guys to automatically go to war all the time over every little thing. He says, you seem like you're a reasonable dude. I, I'm leaving for prison next week. I want you to take over. And I was like, no. <laughs> and he's like, yes. You know, uh, I that was awkward. And I'm glad I got pulled before I had to take over. Because I don't know how that would You were going to lead the whites, the woods? Yeah. You're yeah, going to be the was, head uh, Nazi dude. Yeah, I, was, I was groomed to be uh, uh, Adolf himself. <laughs> so I was, I was growing There's my mustache so, uh... accordingly. And, uh, this is oh, that would have been great. That would have been great if you grew the mustache. And, and he was just like, hey, hey, what's with the mustache, though? We don't do that. That's <laughs> not, no, not anymore. No, that's that's a oh, oh, sorry. Sorry. That's yeah, that's how. Now we're going to start off with Ezra's tradition with the white people rule anthem. Play the white snake song. <laughs> Drink some, yeah. we're some white chocolate and, and talk about how much the other races are ass. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. You'd be surprised how many conversations I had to listen to from Josh that, that it was just like, wow. It was like, dude, you really are messed up, man. But, I did like uh, one scene that was in particular stuck out to me where you know, with the editing, like you said, I don't know if this was one of the first times, one of the middle last times you talked to Josh, but it was you guys talking in the cell, cameras looking at it, and it, the little Chiron or whatnot at the bottom is saying, like, Josh is introducing Mark to a lot of his ideas. About <laughs> and then, like, it shows you, because you're the one facing the camera, like, nodding, like, sagely, like, oh, oh, interesting, interesting, f- fascinating. Hadn't considered that angle before. And then Josh turns, Lord Farquaad turns around to leave. And then you get towards that camera and you just go, holy fuck. (laughs) (laughs) And it's just like, you just realize in that moment, it's like, oh, Mark's, Mark's got to pretend to be a, to be a white supremacist for the season. Yeah. Yeah. And so that ultimately, actually that meeting you're talking about, I think Mm -hmm. that was where they talked about how us white people are better than the black people. And as a result, we are going to act like it. And I was like, oh, great. What have I gotten myself into? Hey, how do I tap out? How do I tap out? <laughs> you're, like, you're like fucking, uh, what was his name, Steve? Or he's walking around rubbing both shoulders at one point. <laughs> that guy is yeah. I'll go. I'll blow this whole operation. <laughs> like, you're a bitch. Dude, I, I if we all if we all go down together though, we should start our own gang. No. We'll do the <laughs> We'll name it after me. We'll call it the Woods. Just yeah. A thought. <laughs> well, I mean it's already an established brand. <laughs> we have to, we have to buy into it. We can be like, we're still the woods. We're kind of <laughs> like the Confederate flag, where now we're gonna pretend it's about something different. Mm. Yeah, that's a real so big. I was- was back just to tell you sometimes 60 days in isn't a good isn't a good thing especially if you work in law enforcement i was back in the jail and this guy is like hey wait a minute you're from the tv show 60 days in and i'm like no no never done i don't what what show is that oh you're from 60 days in no that's not me he must be a good looking dude though because if he looks <laughs> like me i mean doggone and anyway it turned out this guy was uh, pretty high. He was like a lieutenant in the Aryan Brotherhood, and he wanted to talk to me 
about how I was able to infiltrate the woods. So I never, I never had that conversation with him. Wasn't, I wasn't too pleased that he recognized me as the guy that infiltrated the woods. I don't know so, if I'd want to talk to him either. Yeah. But it would yeah, be that really was weird. Thing. Wouldn't it? Yeah. It would be, you know what? I would call because it'd be too interesting to pass up. You'd be thinking like, what the hell is he going to ask? What's he going to say? What am I going to garner from this conversation? Like, was well, it, goes, it, goes, it? it goes one way or the other because it could be, Dude, what'd you do? And I'd be like, yeah, fist bump and this, that, and the other. Or it could be, hey, wait a minute. I'm a lieutenant in the Aryan Brotherhood and now I'm going to work butt because that'll give me street crew. So I never gave him that opportunity. So it's like the Aryan Brotherhood, the main one, and then the woods. So like the Aryan yeah, Brotherhood, kind of an Johnson and from Johnson, my understanding. and then Tide Detergent would be, you know, the woods. Yeah. Wait, which one's the Aryan Brotherhood? I was saying like Johnson and Johnson being the big oh, Aryan Brotherhood, okay. and Tide Detergent is the woods. Like just one. I think wood, oh, I don't like, think so. I think it's more of a Dawn versus Palm Olive thing. You know, competing peers. No. That, that might be. I was I was thinking Tide versus Walmart, you know, like the offshoot. Okay. So know? the Aryan Brotherhood is like we're the Tide. People know who we are. You guys yeah. are starting your bullshit. You know, nobody's buying generic. Yeah, they want to be in the real AB. Yeah, and I did yeah. like how some of the air. Like I like to imagine myself that if I was in jail and I had to join a gang, and I had to be like you did in the woods of the Aryan Brotherhood, and you make it high up enough, they want to give you a tattoo. Do you think you... So let's say let's say you were in there for real, and they get to the point they want to give you a tattoo, and you have to accept, because now you're second in command. They see you're not tatted up. Do you think it would fly, being like, you know what, guys? One step at a time. Let's start out with the eagle. Just the eagle. Oh, no a very eagle. generic eagle. Just very a generic. generic eagle. You can put some angles on it, but let's... You know, tactful about it, but you can't let them know you, you just want the eagle. Or is it just like, no, you, you get a swastika, bitch. You're, you're part of us now. I would imagine. I think I would go for the generic eagle because if someone saw me with my shirt off, I could be like, America, America. <laughs> See, I would get the swastika. You can't really pull that off with the swastika. I just <laughs> no. And then as soon as I leave, I'm just a big fan of Windows 10. I like this idea that Mark becomes the number one guy, the head of whites only one day, and says, you know what? Now that I'm in charge, we're going to stop being racist. We're just we're going to get along with everyone. I am in and charge. Then, like, we got we got a lot of Bible studies, man, and a lot of fist bumps. <laughs> yeah. I make it mandatory. But, you know, people give me crap for fist bumps. This was pre-corona days, mind you. Fist bumps <laughs> give you 95% less bacteria than a handshake, so you can call me a visionary. That's true, especially the way these guys are shaking hands, where it's grab and pull and grab again. That's spreading so many germs. Yeah, there could be What's hugs there? involved. Hugs, kisses, chest bumps. Well, do you know hold, how, do you know hold how on, take a step back. <laughs> you know how easily Corona transmits through the porous uh, tissue in your asshole? <laughs> Very easily. Yes, I do Very know. Easy. Don't ask me how. Yes, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm COVID paused. I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bit of a bug chaser. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Well, you know, it wasn't uh, voluntary. Yeah. I, I did another part I liked was once you started to get your, your mojo, your groove going, you were like, I'm going to, I'm a Christian man, I'm going to get a Bible study rocking and rolling in here. Yeah. And you just start yelling in the pod, Bible study, <laughs> Bible study. And I could I could tell the body language because you did the like uh the shoulder pop, like moving around the Bible study, by Bi like imitating the, the prison, the, the head bobbing kind of thing. Yeah. And I was like, as I'm watching, I'm like, please, someone go to his Bible study. <laughs> just, just one guy go to his Bible study. And then and no one wanted to learn about the Bible. That shocked me because I was like, I thought that was a safe bet in prison. Like, there's so many people there who are, you know, born again or whatever. Like, I, and there were no so, takers, no Christians. So, so can I, can I, can I unveil the curtain of TV magic? Hold the curtain back. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> awesome. So what they did was they took pretty much every time I yelled Bible study. Let me let me explain that story. Let me explain <laughs> that story just a little more. So uh, I had a lot of people that would actually come to my Bible study. Everyone I had, I had anywhere from seven to about fifteen guys that would come. Wow. And uh, and 
a couple of them, it gets so loud in the pod, just everybody chit-chatting and talking and watching TV and whatnot, that they would want me to yell Bible study. So they knew, oh, okay, cool, I'm going to go mm-hmm. to Bible study. And what they did was they took multiple moments that I called it throughout the entire 60 days in, and they <laughs> edited it into one clip. <laughs> and, and trust me, when we saw that, I was just like, oh, my God. <laughs> Are you serious right now? Yeah, because um, it ends with you sitting there to by a, myself, private, right? a private Bible study. You're like, all right, and Bible yeah. study has begun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and it's just me. Yeah. That is, that is awesome. Maybe I'll read about Jonah. News. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, I'm, I'm so, yeah, yeah. Speaking of which, you know how Trump yells fake news all the time? Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. that was fake news. This is yeah, truly yeah. fake news. Yeah. 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 Oh, <laughs> dude, that was awesome. That oh, was thank awesome. you. <laughs> I'll, I'll uh, bust that out a little I more. Thought, I thought it was Trump for a minute. <laughs> yeah. Um but no, uh so I never had no one come to my Bible study. Um that was just more, you know, we're gonna edit it to make them look corny. In fact, to be to be <laughs> to tell you a little bit of more of of, of of some funny stuff that came out. When they came out, when I came out of jail. I made good friends with uh with some of the production people. And one of them actually came up to me and said, you're going to hate like the first five episodes. But after that, you're going to love it. And I'm like, <laughs> huh? Her? So once again, the one thing about 60 Days In that you guys don't see is there's a lot of editing to, and, and I understand it because if you saw that 99% of the time we watch TV, you probably mm-hmm. wouldn't tune in. So it's 99% of there. boredom followed by 1% of sheer terror. And I would be livid if I saw that episode with the Bible study and like you're watching, you're like, yeah, that was like week three. Oh, and that call, that was like week seven. That was yeah. like, and then all edited together. Those bastards. They they really <laughs> like, fucked you on that segment. <laughs> like, like, see, now go back and watch and you'll see some interviews. At one point in the interview, I'm clean shaven. And then the next point, I have a beard. And, uh, <laughs> and you'll see. You'll see. Now, now, I'm not. I'm not saying that 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 it's all bad. It's not. But there, it, it is an extremely edited show, and uh, and you'd be surprised. But uh, being stuck as the Bible study guy is, uh, you know, I'm a Christian anyway. I'm a man of faith, so it's not exactly a terrible a terrible mantra to be mm-hmm. stuck with. Um, in fact, on my Instagram account, a lot of, there's one guy all the time. Like, I mean, this show has been off now for over a year. Every time I post something, he's got to put Bible study, but he's got to put study. <laughs> Jesus, dude. I'm like, it's been a year. Oh, you yeah. shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure no one else will do that. Yeah, no, no one else will do that. It'll just be him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It'll just, I, it'll I, just I, up I, the I, engagement. It's kind of like a large podcast, so never mind. I just set myself up for failure. <laughs> yes. Oh, well, hey, it gets the engagement up. That's what you want on Instagram, right? Yes. yes. So. I have no interest in being on the show. But what's you sure? I can, I can put a call for you. Put a call. <laughs> hold, the, hold, the, hold the phone on that. <laughs> so from what you've <clears throat> learned of the three of us so far, mm. who of us do you think in a power ranking system, because that's how we do things here, is going <laughs> to do, do the best versus the, the worst on, on 60 days in as the resident expert? Okay. Hmm. Love you, brother, but I think you would do the worst. Oh, rats! I didn't. Yeah, but carry on. Yeah, and I'll tell you. I'll tell you why. As much as as much as I like you, you're a good dude, but you're too <laughs> damn nice. Um, Woody. I think Woody would do the best. I didn't see this I'll coming. I'll tell you why. He's quiet. He's observant. He doesn't really talk a lot. So he observes everything. He's got the glasses thing going on. So he's kind of and and listen, I'm guilty, Woody. All right, um, hey, you know we're kind of we're kind of uh, undervalued, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, they're like, oh, he's he's kind of the nerdy guy, but you got worse eyes than both of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm not joking. But I, I mean, you know, I don't know. I'll take know. my wins where I can get them. I like it. This is a gr- the, you know what spot on. Mark. This is a bullshit. <laughs> what is like? Have him back for a second interview. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Taylor being strong, you might have picked him first. Look at no, him. He's built for Taylor lifting shit. Too, but you're you're quiet. You're observant. You know everything. I just I don't know. I think you kind of know everything that goes on. Yeah, Woody, you can you be know how to the professor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man y'all know before he come in here he'd be flying around 
He's a computer repair man. <laughs> Can you hack the system, get us out of here. <laughs> yeah, I <just> 61 days. <laughs> I heard he owned a mining company. <laughs> Yeah, Dude, I, I if we all if we all go down together though, we should start our own gang. Ooh. No, we'll do it the. <laughs> we'll name it after me. We'll call it the Woods. Just yeah. A thought. Well, Ooh. I mean, it's already an established brand. <laughs> you have to, you have to buy into it. We can be like, we're still the Woods. We're kind of like the Confederate flag. Where now we're going to pretend it's about something different. Talking about the hard mode thing reminded me of a 60 Days In thing I was watching where as the blonde woman was coming into like the holding jail cell where they're all sitting on the blue couches and it's women and men in there because everyone is just getting arrested. And this guy, this like tall, lanky white guy, the, the blonde woman is sitting there with the body language of like so stressed out, so worried. And he comes in like chitting and chatting with everyone. This is just a Thursday for him. He's back in. He's back in jail scars all over his face from the amount of meth he's done picking at it skinny lanky white guy he comes and sits down right next to the white attractive woman from the the show and she's looking like straight ahead and he's like so you come here often <laughs> <laughs> he's literally asked someone in a jail holding cell do you come here often and she just uh, just, just that, that sounds set up to me i, I don't know my reality tv sensors are going off I don't know, but this guy wasn't on the show. He was just a meth head. Right, but he was on and the he show. Got, I mean, we all watched him. Yeah. A fight later against uh, Rocker, the, the black guy. So that, not a very good fight, though. Neither of them. I right. saw one where they were in the holding cell, you know, before you get it like put into the jail. And one of the contestants robbed one of the actual human beings who was in there. That's hilarious. How much did he get? Anything? Just twenty dollars. Like, like the guy was. The issue was like this guy was in there and he was really drunk. This white guy and he's holding up a wad of money, and he's like showing it off. He, he's like, I got five hundred and thirty-seven dollars. Somebody and he's like trying to get like the jailer's attention to like for some reason shit telling them he has this money, and the guy's like, let me hold it. Let me hold it. I just want to hold it. I just want to count it for you. And he's like, no, no. And finally, he's just like, give me twenty dollars of that money. <laughs> and the guy's just like, yeah. <laughs> gives it to him. So immediately after he robs, strong arm robs this man, which can get you shot. I'm told he he gets re he gets pulled out of the cell to like get put in. To like booking or whatever, like put into the actual jail, jail pod. Well, there's a machine right there that allows you to take any cash you have on you and deposit it directly into your prisoner account. So he takes mm -hmm. that man's 20 and puts it on his fucking account. What a cool guy. What season's that? I want to watch that one next. <sighs> That's our guy who did that. I, I got That's a little. Our guy. Yeah, the guy on the show. He's a badass. He was. He was he's a prison ex prison guard or something mm. like that. Big, strong black guy, just alphas everybody. Just he gets two or three shanks while he's in there. He's always getting drugs. Like whenever they like do the thing where they release them and then they go to meet with the sheriff, he sits down at the table with the sheriff and he's like, I got this knife and I got this marijuana and I got a whole bunch of these pills. <laughs> he's like, he's had them on him, smuggled them out of jail, carried them down the highway and brought them right into the sheriff's office. And he's like, he's like, here, I got, I got a knife. I got marijuana. I got pills. Like he was constantly because they trusted him. He, he acted like a fucking prisoner. He's the one I got told you guys the story about where he punked another prisoner so bad. The prisoner asked to leave the unit. He told wow. the guy that um, the guy owed him like two noodles, like like ramen noodles, and couldn't pay. So he was like, all right, give me your clothes. Give me your pants. Give me your shoes. Give me your shirt. Give me e – took everything the man had. He's standing there in his underwear and T-shirt, just terrified. And he goes to the guard. He's like, I, I got to roll out of this unit. I can't be in this unit. And our guy is distributing the clothes <laughs> he's stolen from the man to his homies. He's like, hey, who wants a big shirt? Here. 
Who Put wants a big shirt? <laughs> who wants an extra pair of green fucking pants? Here you go. Who wants some orange flip flops? Here you go. Like, just I, gives a shit away. One of my prison survival strategies is not to get into debt. Just don't. Just don't. Like you. Hopefully you have a job in there and you make some kind of money and you live within your means. Just stay out of debt. My God, you get butt fucked. Mm -hmm. Perhaps literally, perhaps figuratively. Just stay out of it. Like all these people, like it, they, what they get ramen noodles and can't pay it back. And now the guy's mm -hmm. ruined. So, yeah, no, no, you right. didn't see that coming. People like bet money they don't have. And, and now they have to pay it by Friday under threat of like severe violence. Just fucking don't go in debt, asshole. They give yeah. you all you need to survive for free. And that extra stuff is about comfort. Just fucking stay out of debt. One guy owed so much that he couldn't eat anymore. He owed them his lunch trays. The so trays? like lunch came, lunch came, he'd get his lunch tray, he'd turn around, and there was a guy waiting on him. Come on. Take the lunch tray from him. And like he he's he wasn't a contestant. He was just a fucking he was just a guy. <laughs> he was just a poor prisoner. And one of the contestants tells him, he's like, dude, how much do you owe? Because clearly this man can't figure out math or he wouldn't be in the situation. He's like, how much do you owe? And he tells him. He's like, all right, well, look, just only eat breakfast for the next six days and you'll be out of debt. But if you string this out where you give him one tray a day, he's going to kill you because they're adding interest on it. It doesn't work out. You're mm -hmm. it, This is going to last months. The, you got to it's easy he's like i don't eat and and he didn't either it was so weird this one guy like ran his own store one of the plants one of the contestants he ran a store where he like had tons of commissary and he would loan commissary out and and get it back with mm -hmm. interest and all he ate while he was in there was like peanut butter like he would just eat a little peanut butter all the time and then you know that's that stuff's super calorie dense so like yeah. a jar of peanut butter would last him like three days or something like that. And so he just needed a couple of jars a, a month and all of it, he sold every tray he got all of his lunch trays. He sold or traded for like commissary items. And then he'd have more commissary items. And Jeez. then he could I bet that guy left with dozens of dollars. He gave yeah. all the stuff away. <laughs> I think Almost enough to pay for the Uber back home. <laughs> right? <laughs> like what, what's the end game in here? Like prison money. It raised his so small. It was raising his profile and and getting him in with a lot of people and uh, and, and um, like like people. It was making him a lot of relationships. So he was able to learn about a lot of the drug traffic and stuff. But he got so far in that they asked him to rat out, rat out one of his friends. They were like, "What's he into?" And he's like, "I don't think I want to talk about that." And they're like, "You realize that's your job. You're yeah. <laughs> you're in there to determine what kind of." Illegal activities are, are happening. He's like, he's like, I'm not a rat. All right. <laughs> and they're like, the Yes, you are. <laughs> That's what the mission is. The mission is You're Monterey stupid. Jack. They're like, You yeah. are the king rat. <laughs> We're asking you to go in there and figure out who the shot caller is. Everybody fucking knows who the shot caller is. The prison guards mm -hmm. all know who the shot caller is. Every prisoner knows who the shot caller is. The shot caller isn't keeping his identity a secret. We don't need to have a 60 days in undercover TV show to figure out who the shot caller is. Yeah. And it's like, you just know that the people producing the show and the police officers around there are sitting there watching the monitors like, hey, do you think this blonde bitch is going to figure out all the stuff we know already? Oh, no, no way she's going to figure out who the head honcho is. Look at them. They're all sitting together bitching about how bad the hot dogs taste. Like, they, they're not bringing home any new information unless you're this motherfucker Kyle's talking about who apparently genuinely was pilfering items. Or not even pilfering, just having them given to him because he was trusted. So I, I want to get to the one where the guy just... The guy does two seasons, apparently, because he just <laughs> yeah, I want to hear that one, too. Just having a blast. He's like, you know what? After this, I don't even miss my wife. I don't miss my children. I don't miss my wife. I'm going to be the head of the, the white gang. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, so I did, has anyone seen 60 Days In? Is that what it's called? Someone uh, help me with no, that. No, I haven't heard of it. Shucks, I just need a few seconds. Is it a show? Is it a documentary? 60 Days In, okay, I have it right. All right, it's a show on A&E. Oh. You can watch it on their website for free. Um, they, just, they just allow you to stream it off their website. And basically, these people, innocent people, agree to be locked up in jail for 60 days. Because <laughs> they're stupid. <laughs> no, well, they get paid, but the... Um, 
so there was a sheriff who was like he was bad he was corrupt i think the sheriff himself got convicted of something or other i forget the details and a new sheriff was voted in and he's cleaning it up and apparently he's made a lot of good progress but one of the things he does to clean it up is he has this program where regular people like marines people who want to be police officers someday uh teachers social workers they uh they go to the jail and they literally just exist as inmates for 60 days what's the pay they don't tell us all yeah. right so that's a good question please continue if you have more to cover i've but got I a little a more it's it's good. So what it is is it seems like oh oh and and no one knows that they're um, people aside from the sheriff and the captain right and now, the cameraman. So well, the other prisoners think they're regular prisoners. Exactly. And how do they keep the, someone from getting shivved? Most of the prison yeah. guards think they're regular prisoners. Some don't, but that you know, sounds like, insane. This is nonsense. Why would you sign oh, up for this? It's scary. the money. Um, now they have some like escape plans. Like if you think that things are starting to boil over, you can say like, Oh, I really miss hot coffee. And that uh -huh. like sounds the alarms. People the, are like, Holy shit. Yeah, usually in prison, there's the a very signal slow is, is, build, like a roller coaster up to where it gets out of control. You know, where it's, there, uh, you know? there kind of is actually, um, like, I don't know. I've never been, <laughs> I haven't been either, but I've watched the show and you can see like other prisoners are talking about you and they're like, you know, dude, that guy's fucked up. I don't believe him anymore. You know, like, like you can see that you're growing unpopular and, uh, um, you know, you, you can say that, and, and the, the other thing she is joining the conversation, but the, the towel around your neck, like if you walk with the towel around, there was like a, a thing they were supposed to do. I don't know if it was this or what the scoop was, but if you put maybe your towel over your head, but if you walk around like that on camera, that's another way, uh, of signaling that, that you want out, that you're afraid. This and better be a ton of money that they're making. I don't because think this, it is. Uh -uh. Man, like this is, this could so quickly just turn into the most traumatic thing and just ruin your life. Just get gang raped or something or just the shit kicked out of you and stabbed in the, the hallway. Brush. Yeah. Like, yeah, man, this is such a high risk like, like for one of the guys, a fear factor level reward. Some of the people are doing <laughs> terrible. There's one guy, he's a teacher and he's like, look, I work two jobs and I want to be like, fuck off. Like one of them is a summer job. Don't act like you work two jobs. You dick. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, I, you should just say I do two different things. Right. Yeah. You get all summer off. Stop it. When my one job stops, I start another. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't take the whole summer off. It's the hardest thing. Um, Anyway, I'm getting off track. The uh, uh, He's like, well, I work two jobs. There. I can't wait to get <laughs> into prison. I'm just going to lay down. I'm going to. He kept talking about stretching his toes. Apparently, this guy's toes are in dire need of stretching because he mentioned it at least six times how he was going to lay down and stretch his toes and how it was no problem for him whatsoever. And then uh, he gets in there and he just immediately doesn't jive with the other prisoners. And uh, if you're like me at all you watch the whole thing wondering how you would do like how was would he you going fit through, like a red sharpie on the stall walls and correcting graffiti and telling people <laughs> spelling incorrect. he man, just like crying like the fat man on shawshank on the first night that's, they, that's me they roll oh, in there that, yes. with this Perfect. mat right so you, you walk in with a mat and you sort of unroll it onto a bunk and uh he didn't get a bunk he just sort of got a spot on the floor and <laughs> he lays out on the floor he puts his feet on um I don't know. In my high school, we had these cafeteria tables that kind of folded up and uh, he puts yeah. his feet on like the chair portion of a cafeteria table. And uh, and he's like, oh, this is great. Like your life is so much harder than being a prisoner. And uh, all the prisoners are like, what the fuck is with this guy? They all think he's a cop. Um, so think about the way he holds himself. Doesn't it, it makes him not belong there. Yeah. You can't yeah. just hang out in prison acting like, you know, you're out of this in 20 days. Like, yeah. oh, you rubes are in here. Oh, you actually killed someone? Well, there's I'm going to make ways. 30 grand. Yeah. There, 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 there's two attitudes that you have in prison. One is downtrodden and depressed. You should be just like fucking like just looking at the ground and just fucking lots of shaking your head. And it, it, When someone looks at you, you visually look like you're thinking back about what you did and going, fucking stupid. You should have known better. Fucking cause cameras. Everyone has cameras. And then there's like the hard ass guy who's like, this isn't my first time, man. I've been here. That, that's my old CL over there. I raped three guys in there. You know, I, I think I would. Oh, the confident rapist. Yeah, I'm <laughs> just saying. I'm, 
I, I would not like this. I don't deal with discomfort well. I mean, these, these B&Bs that are a little I below my standards irk me, you know? Um, I was thinking a, among my friends how different people would do. I think I'd do very poorly. Uh, people like, like Chiz was like, what, well, he's got that MMA training. I'm not sure how far that goes. You know, one, some of these fellows are very large and, and that's an issue. Some of them are very large while simultaneously being very young and very strong, right? That's a tough nut to crack. And they all have yeah. more friends than you. In prison. And, and that's the other thing. So I used to train and there were these prison guards and you guys have heard the stories, but, uh, one of the takeaways I had is it's not like they set up very many one V one fair fights in an open area with mats, right? That's not how this goes down. It's surprising attack punches in the back of the head uh a lock in a sock was the thing that they pointed out all the time ah i um, remember i told you that about that years ago with my uncle terry's story about how he talked about the lock in the sock okay yeah the, dude i swear the prison guard like said the really same thing fucked up dr seuss book <laughs> <laughs> it was it uh, was like a real fucked a lock up in the sock. Seuss book. i'll give you a smock <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> And He's doing uh, 25 right now. So if you don't open your ass and let me give you a fuck. <laughs> so <laughs> let's assume that any training I've had is completely worthless. And then like <laughs> a- after that, it's just, it's about getting along and fitting in. And I was thinking to myself, although I'm starting to roll back on that a bit. I'm like, Kyle's really good at fitting in everywhere. Like uh, you see him in Boston and he fits in fine amongst all those city folk. You see him in Georgia and he fits in all those fine amongst the, the hickiest of hicks. And, and Kyle will just, you know, oh yeah, slow it down, tall, perfect fit. And I'm like, there's no reason to think that he can't do felon just as well as he's done no, everything none else. Of us black would, people <laughs> like me. None black of us people would like do. me. And, no. uh, and and I don't think I'm taking too big of a step to say that it's probably going to be a large population of black people uh, in jail. Um, so I, I think I'd be okay as far as that. I, think I don't think that I'd get in any really trouble. Big Aryan guy is going to think you're real cute you right think? off the bat. You know, there's going to be some six eight guy with ten. This isn't federal desks. penitentiary. This is, this is fucking and... county lockup. Oh, okay. He is right about that. It's, well, yeah, I really built is. this up into something that. So this guy's just really hanging out in a room with everybody who got too drunk walking around the city. It's my understanding that the federal stuff is not as bad. That it's tightly regulated and they kind of have their act together. And it's jail that's loosely regulated and ugly stuff happens. I didn't know. Well, I don't know if it's. And, and, I, it, I think it would go two different ways. Either one, I, I make some friends and I'm able to like, I had that little spark during a conversation that I'm imaginarily having with some scary guys and I make mm-hmm. them laugh. If I can ever get on their good be side the and be like, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, funny white boy over there. He's great. Yeah, he tells me all kind of stories. Like if that I could be that guy, to, yeah. that would have I could to be, be like your dancing monkey for 60 days yeah. and I like make you guys laugh, see some real <laughs> knee slappers, um, that'd be great. But I feel like if I go in there and, I like, and I'm like, hey man, what's up? And he's just like, D- but like, that's it for him. That's all I had to say to piss him off. He's like, why are you talking to me? You trying to fuck me? You trying to get one over on me? And I'm like, oh shit, I picked Crazy Pete. I picked Crazy Pete. He's the one I try to warm up to. He's the fucking maniac over there in the corner, like whittling his, his, his toothbrush into a stabbing weapon. That's the guy I picked up for friend. But I think if you make friends, you're good. If you don't, you're not, right? That's how life is. Dude, I would just get, yeah. I, I feel like at one point I'd tell someone he has to consider the context in which that was said. And they'd be like, you know, you talk like a bitch. Yeah. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and I would just be done. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you'd yeah. have to. You'd either have that, to be like really funny and hope that they appreciate your high stakes stand up or, <laughs> you know, stakes. hey, you better really like, knock him dead out there, break a leg, you know, make him laugh or you're going to get raped. Or if you just walk out or there. Or you have like, to like, act totally crazy. Like, just randomly, as soon as you walk in, just, like, sit in the corner and don't move. Like, you have to really commit to this. Just, like, sit in the corner and just look at it for, like, five hours, randomly laughing, just bursting out. Like, that that might be a good approach, because then they might... Or you, you loudly announce your HIV. <laughs> loudly. You know? Or hep C. You know? God, this hep C is really, do we, really bad. When do we today. get our HIV medicine? <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting like, to do one of those. Late. The guy looks at you like he's retarded and he's got AIDS. Let's let's not fuck with that guy. Like 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 worst thing we could do is hit him and, and a retarded woman came in. Something. Yeah yeah. A you retarded yeah. woman comes. How'd you in. get AIDS? Last time I was in here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the, uh, a woman comes in and she's I got not. Nothing to lose. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a good spl- sling blade. I've said it a bunch of times. Re- Taylor is exploding on Twitch right now. And I'm so happy it's happening to him as a grown-up, right? Like, yeah. 
it might have ruined 16 year old taylor i'm sorry blame you say that again oh i was just gonna say he's been pulling crazy numbers lately uh did weren't you okay. like the top 50 sub or something like that top 100 subs? someone sent me something with that but i don't that seems like propaganda it's gonna <laughs> give me, me an even bigger head and so, uh, I, I definitely don't need that but yeah, it, like the, the sub situation is out of control i remember like starting and being like man if i could like get to like 500 that that's like chunk of change right there and it's just stormed past that and i'm just i'm shocked by by where it's it's gotten to so very very cool i'm, I'm having a great time on twitch it's cool. fun what do you what do you stream on twitch yeah. uh i recently oh, I, I like i like the f single player games that give me more to change mm. to, to engage with chat because i'm ass at multiplayer and nobody wants to watch me suck so like <laughs> gta 5 gta 5 i played a ton of i love gta Story. 5 yeah, it was. I'd never played before. It was great. Uh, Red Dead uh -huh. Redemption Two. I'm playing now, and then some of my biggest streams are like I'll just watch sixty days in and then pause every few minutes and make fun of the, the people in it. Does it ever uh, become a problem that like your chat wants to have creative control on you? Like I, I have a feeling that if the chat had their druthers, you just watch sixty days in or whatever show they picked every single stream for the rest of your life, riffing on like mystery. <laughs> Science Theater 3000, I think yeah. I have that right. Mm -hmm. I, I've definitely seen that, but no, most people are, they seem pretty cool with whatever. Like okay. people will, like if I say on Twitter, what do people want to watch? Do they want to watch Red Dead or do they want to watch uh, 60 Days In? Or uh, I, We just started Beyond Scared Straight on there, which is oh, hilarious. Yes. It is just, it is just adults threatening kids with rape for 50 <laughs> minutes at a time. Yeah, <laughs> there was this one guy, oh, Cato. And we'll do power rankings for who has the, the highest power ranking of, of all the characters in the show. And Kato was this prisoner, shape, white guy, shaved head, goatee, scary looking motherfucker. And I think that the, I've never seen the show ever in my life. And I think the way it's going to go is like some prisoners going to sit down and be like, hey, man, I didn't even used to be in, in the AB, in the Aryan Brotherhood. But they make you join that in here. They make you become that. Don't become what you aren't. Don't, don't do what I've done. Like, I thought it was going to be like that. But they like some some lippy kid comes in and the guards like Kato, get over here. And Kato just comes storming over and he goes, "Hey, you look pretty. I bet you look good in a dress. <laughs> if you look real good in a dress, come with me. Come with me. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna burn your ass out and put you in a dress. And then guess what? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna sell you to the guy above me for fifteen soups. <laughs> <laughs> and this is this is this is ten minutes into episode one. And I'm like, I'm like this, is a, this is a good ass show. This is a very good show. They uh <laughs> they like like the guards like force some poor like fourteen year old up against the bars and all the prisoners are like give me your damn shoes. <laughs> the other guy has to take his shoes off. The guards like give him your shoes. You thought you were a big man. You're going to not give him a shoe. And the guy's like taking his shoes off, like his real shoes. And then the prisoner's like, oh, these are nice. Oh, these are like just stealing his shoes. It's, it's very, very funny. And so, yeah, I've been having fun streaming that. But uh, I, I, I was talking to Tucker. Tucker gives me a lot of really good advice. Thank you, Tucker, if you're listening. Probably not. But uh, he gives me a lot of good advice. Like, I'll, I'll DM him and be like, hey, can I say retard and call people retarded? And he's like, yeah, that should be fine. I was like, hey, can I say this and that? And he's like, definitely not. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then, I, like, he gives me very good advice. I asked him uh, at one point. I was like, hey, I'm getting great numbers doing this 60 days in. And I get, what, you know, what do you – I think he even addressed it on the show. He's like, hey, don't find one thing and then devote yourself to that. And don't become just a react Andy. Mm. Like, dip in dip your toe into other stuff like yeah mm. i know you're bad at games taylor but you know stuff like red dead stuff like gta you know that lets you still engage with chat that's really good and if it's like a dialogue a story game you can really riff a lot on that like that it, it's fun it's fun he's Being right. Arthur. I, some of my favorite streamers are probably just known for that game and if they were to ever play anything else their chats mm -hmm. would revolt and uh I look at them, I'm like, how are they going to make that transition? How are they going to do that? And it's better yeah. to nip it in the bud before, you know, it gets too big. If you use oh. 17,000 people every time you stream and then you're down to 700 on some other yeah. thing, because that's, mm -hmm. yeah. I was, I was kind of scared to play uh, uh, Legend of Zelda on my stream recently because mm -hmm. I was playing Ocarina of Time and I was kind of scared to do it because I was like, Man, nobody's gonna fucking come out for this because I'm known for like Call of Duty, Pokemon, stuff like that. And uh, I found that if you you need to give it more than like one stream to truly gauge, though, because mm -hmm. 
a lot of people will do like one stream if they don't see the good numbers they'll never play it again but i stuck with it played through the whole game got pretty good numbers on it they actually raised as i was playing it like at, at first it was like 90 100 viewers and then it went to like 150 or so so sometimes you just gotta like kind of force it force a yeah. square peg into a round hole i did that with magic the gathering arena and nobody in my chat wants to watch me play magic the gathering <laughs> yeah, you need to play it by ear too yeah just uh, pop in and be like what the fuck is this I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> watch 60 days in retard <laughs> <Fathead>. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah you, you gotta you gotta just roll with the punches and, and see what works you're right yeah. so mm -hmm. and, and like part of it and it's gonna sound dumb but like like play almost well, I guess it doesn't sound dumb. Play what you're having fun with at the moment. Mm. Like, I'm having a real good time playing Red Dead. I like the story. I like, you know, it is a little bit admittedly harder to keep up with the story when you're, like, trying to engage with chat a lot. But I'm having fun with that game. And so even though I only pull, like, 400 people on, on Red Dead compared to, you know, my, my, my really good 60 Days In streams would get over 1,000. And, you know, it, that you're right. That was disheartening at one point. That's where bullshit, Taylor. Your really good streams get over 2,000. Like, I guess technically <laughs> no, 2,000 is no. over 1,000 also, but you're being modest. <laughs> <laughs> well, well it's, go, it's going really, really well. I'm, I'm, I'm having a real good time. So should have started this years ago. Should have should have listened to no, everybody. No, no, Taylor. Me. It's better to happen as an adult. We just covered this. Yeah, okay, <laughs> fair enough. Okay. Yeah. 29-year-old Taylor is going to do better at this than 19-year-old than Taylor. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I want good things for you, and I don't think Thank it would have been a good thing for you at 21 or something like you know. It, mm. It's probably it's, not. And a lot of these people on like YouTube and Twitch and everything, like they never have a really shitty job as a point of comparison, and so mm -hmm. they get used to making what is way better money than the average family in this country, and for the amount of work that like like if they had to go you know work at a, a genuinely tough job for a day. Like they, they would crumble. Like they'd be like, "Oh my god, are you kidding? People do this every day. Garbage men make fifty grand a year. Oh my god, this is terrible. This is, delivery people don't even make that, and they're hauling your heavy shit to the door all day, every day. And like, like I, I, I'm not trying to steal valor from people who actually had hard jobs. My, my shittiest job ever was at a car rental company working like 60 hours a week getting berated by people who were mad that we didn't have reservations for them. Like, and that that was a terrible job. It sucked. You feel like an absolute retard washing a car, ruining in a suit in a wash bay, ruining your nice leather shoes because there's standing water there, and then you have to come out and you just look like an idiot. But it like that's nothing compared to most difficult jobs, and I know that. So I, but at least it was something. It was like I'm working fucking fifty plus hours a week. I hate it, and I'm bringing home like thirty grand a year, like. Like I, this is this is awful. Yeah. If I had offered that mm. version of you five thousand dollars, which is a good estimate, to bark with the dog collar on, you jump at that shit. Like I, I get yeah, it. You could have said five hundred at the time. <laughs> I would have done that. I would have done that. Yeah. Yeah. And oh. I, and, yeah. Can I segue into the what I did for money? Because yeah, go for it. Oh, I can't um, wait. Uh, Are you going to tell him about that time? No, yeah. not that time. <laughs> no, uh, Taylor. Taylor hosted me after one of his streams, and. Um, Somebody, well, it was like half the fucking chat. We're like, uh, BT, are you a are you a Dawn guy? And I'm like, I like Dawn. Yeah, man, Dawn's good. And they're like, if you've got Dawn in your house right now, bring it on stream. So I'm like, all right. And I thought I, I could have swore I had some, but all I had was <laughs> Palm Olive. Uh, so I'm like, guys, I actually don't have Dawn. All I got is Palm Olive, and the chat starts going insane. <laughs> and they're like, dump that it's shit an out. Inferior dude. soap. It's an inferior soap. Yeah, and I'm like, dump that shit out, dude fucking dump it out and i'm like i'm not dumping it out like it's like four dollars a bottle <laughs> right and then people start donating and and gift subbing and i think I, it got up to about fifty dollars i'm like file fucking <laughs> throw it out and i tilted my camera over to my trash can over here and just dumped the whole thing out so yeah. <laughs> i did something like that for 50 so i mean i'm not uh, i've dumped loads for less yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's 10 bottles of dawn at least so yeah. There you go. Exactly. Solid. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Back, yeah it, back on my channel. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> back on my channel, I did a few drunk streams on my birthdays, and um, basically that what that would comprise of is I would have like certain tiers of donations, and I would take a drink when someone donated uh, a low amount, you know, sit little sip, higher amount shots. 
and um risky game you were playing yes the only uh, use yeah. we played business model <laughs> i know how this game ends really good yeah. for three years <laughs> yeah yeah uh, both the times i did it it was two consecutive birthdays um i i gave someone else control of the stream in advance um because both of them ended with me passing out on stream <laughs> um <laughs> with <laughs> with with my audience to 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 see, uh, it was quite quite the sight to be to be honest. Was there um, a face I cam? Watched it back a... Yeah, face cam. It was face cam. Okay. Um, so I, I I watched it back and I watched myself do things that, that I I honestly don't remember. Um, <laughs> they're all fairly harmless because I'm I'm a fairly nice person when I'm drunk. I'm I'm just more like very complimentary. Um, but yes, it was. It was an interesting business model, which I thought I'd keep up for the rest of my YouTube career. But in hindsight, I I, I try and reserve drinking now for uh, select nights out and um, and appropriate times, which aren't related to my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Because I think people uh, prefer me making videos when I'm sober. Though honestly, <laughs> I have got up in the morning a couple times, still kind of drunk and wrote some scripts and they're definitely <laughs> quite they're definitely funnier than my <laughs> average script I'll, script I'll tell you that much